Dean. What's up, man? I feel like it's been forever. It's been like what two weeks? Yeah, it's been it's been a minute now, right? I, I think I, I think you only missed last week, but if it, it feels like a minute, did yeah, we, we did it the week before, right? That was with uh with with it with that with Ken. The last one I did was with Ken, but you did one with um, Fitzwater, and then right. one with Ken again later. Oh, so it's been two weeks then. Been- yeah, it has been two weeks. Oh. I, I was in um, Nevada with Paul, mm-hmm. and then there was uh, the last one you did. I I had something going on. I don't remember what it was. But- okay, okay. How was that show? Because from what I hear, like their production value. Is, is top notch like the Legion? As far as like, yeah, the production value, um, the speed in which the show went, it was really good. The lighting was incredible. Mm-hmm. Like Paul looked amazing on stage. Those pictures, yeah, like the, the way the yeah. light, mm-hmm. the high definition pictures that he got, awesome, awesome. But like, it reflected what he looked like, so that was good. good. Um, I wasn't, I was in shock with Paul's placing. Uh-huh. Um, unbiased opinion. I I had Paul his highest third and his lowest fourth. Yeah, but not no seventh. He was no fucking seventh, and so I didn't see the lineup. Little disappointed with that, huh? I didn't see the lineup. Yeah, well, fuck. Uh, well, Paul sent me a video. He uh, asked, or I can send it to you too. Yeah, um, in the group chat, you can see who three through six was. Okay, okay, and that's. Who beat Paul? There's the, the in that video. Like I said, I'll send it to you. The guy on the far left is the only guy in that lineup I see beating Paul. Okay, and that's why I said at worst fourth. Yeah, but um, the first and second, I walked backstage and I I um I saw both of them before anything, and I was like, well. Paul didn't win this one. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Like, they look good? Oh, they, they look good. You mean? Bro, there was like a fucking Phil Heath look like just without that crazy, mm-hmm. like, freak factor that Phil had. Oh, but literally God. from the face down, like, shape everything. Like, mm-hmm. it was pretty incredible. I was like, wow, well, that guy's going to fucking win. And the guy who took second was exactly who I thought would took second. Yeah. And then I would have thought Paul or that other guy that I mentioned would have took third. Yeah. What's the uh uh age age limit for Mar- for for that for the Masters and Legion? Was forty? Well, I think I think if you win Masters, you can compete in Masters thirty five plus. So, I think that's the, there's no weight, there's no age cap yeah. after thirty five. You might play mm-hmm. out. Thirty five is thirty five is young though, bro. To to, to be I know when, you, when people can, when people do their pro card. <laughs> In Masters for 35, I'm always fucking doing 35, bro. <laughs> to be honest, bro, I don't even think you, you hit your prime. Like, guys are hitting their prime at, like, 38, 39 sometimes. That's, you, you know, know, man. That's, yeah, I, that's kind of strange. But I, I, I kind of want to see 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 the picks to kind of to kind of see, like, what what they kind of been thinking. Do you think do you think his, his tattoos play a role as, like, a pro? Um, you know? I think... Paul's biggest downfall mm-hmm. is that he was a very heavy, like 300 pound man, like yeah. fat. And skin. I think the elasticity of his skin really affects him in the back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I usually see Paul in person. So, like, he'll get those that skin folds in the bottom. Mm-hmm. He'll, he's peeled. He's absolutely peeled. But because the skin doesn't like attach tight to the muscle, like mine or yours. Yeah, he can never show detail in his back the way they want to see it, and so yeah. they say shows are one through the back, and I think that his back doesn't look bad. It's just it's never gonna look like mine, yeah, because of that skin quality. Paul Paul has drastically brought his back up, mm-hmm. but it's hard to see the lines and the separation and detail, no matter how shredded he gets because of that loose skin. Um, back yeah. I feel like we talked about that last time. It was like, like, like he he has to drop be- below the point where he's already lean, just to like make up for that for like the extra the extra skin basically. So he, like you can tell when he's already lean, but then he has to go even more to appear even leaner, right? 
Yeah, but it's like, okay, say you get lean to the point where you're strung out. Mm -hmm. Now the muscle is so depleted. Now it's harder to press it against the skin. You don't push on the skin. Well, it's a double-edged sword. Like, yeah, yeah, go ahead, push it to the lower levels. You're going to be peeled inside out, but still the back is going to have that. It's not sticking to the muscle the way you want it to. Yeah, yeah. That's important. That's important. I I remember... um, when Dexter used to used to train at Coast, uh, I talked to him and he he would he 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 stopped bulking when he hit like his mid forties because he was like because he he felt like if he put on like too much if he got too heavy he wouldn't bounce back like like his skin wouldn't bounce back the same. But granted, he 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 was in his fifties when he was tired. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you bulk at fifty, man, it's, it's gonna be tough. To it's over. Yeah, <laughs> you going you can't bulk at fifty. You know, there's a skin. I- Mm-hmm. I don't see myself doing any more crazy pushes after this, like maybe these next two, like mm-hmm. next two off seasons. I think after this, like it'll all be about refining. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't see myself having to get any heavier than 300 pounds. I'm not 300 pounds now, but mm-hmm. I will be very soon. Well, and so I just don't see myself needing to. Well, cause, cause at, at your, at your height, your 300 pounds is like my 330. And at that point, you you can't even breathe. You can't train. You can barely train. Well, it's, I just feel like it's like a point of no return, though. Like you'll start growing in places you don't even want. And so mm-hmm. it's like, I I just think it's all about yeah, just the quality of the muscle at that point. What's good, Paul? I'm mud, man. You can check it in. How you feel? Oh, actually, about I, I saw the post you made on your story. I sent you a DM. I didn't check my DMs, but. You, I felt the same. Like you almost felt like you're still in prep. Like you're so fatigued, right? Like you, you felt. It felt a little worse, man. Like during the day, exactly. I'm fine, but you know the way we train. I mean, we don't we don't fuck around. So it's like mm-hmm. after after even arm day after we train, I'm 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 trash for three four hours, bro. Like I don't even want to eat. I don't want to move. I don't want to get up to cook my food. Like I'm just fucking done. Like yeah, I think <laughs> I think I, I think I was telling Joe the similar thing happened to me. And I thought there was something wrong with me, but then I literally had to keep pulling back my volume like every week. Like I went from like 15 sets to like 13 to like 10 until I got down to like six. Then I finally felt a little better, you know. And once I felt a little better, I held that, held that for a couple of weeks and it slowly hey, it up. So I, I don't know why it's like that. I think maybe you have to push maybe really hard this prep. I'm not sure. And you probably just built up a lot of fatigue. And now, now, now I was hitting you like a ton of bricks. So I don't like taking weeks off. I rather <laughs> pull back the the volume um, or intensity, I guess, uh, or both. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. yeah, for me, the pre- the prep wasn't wasn't nearly as difficult as any as any of the other ones. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, the way the way we did it, like we we drop carbs three four days straight. You know what I mean? I yeah. would drop weight quick once we drop carbs, and then I would yeah. get a refeed for two three days. Mm-hmm. So I was never really like suffering per se, you know what I mean? Like what 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 we're used to suffering. Yeah. Um, but as far as pulling back on the volume and that, like I, I mean it hasn't really been talked about what the next plan is yet. Mm-hmm. But uh I got thirty four weeks. I mean, if I'll put it that way before I get back on stage. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those things where if I take three weeks off, now I'm down to thirty two weeks. I mean, in my mind I'm thinking, fuck, I don't got time to pull off. No. So I'd rather just deal with the fatigue. Eventually it'll it'll I think balance itself out, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, just, you know, just keep pushing. So you're not taking it easy at all. Like you're not going lighter. <laughs> or, no, damn. Ah. God damn, Paul. Well, when I when I took on my rebound, because I've always felt like Paul's feeling. Yeah. I did the California. It took me a long time to feel normal. That was the. I don't know why it took me so long, but I also have never been that low on body fat in my life. So maybe that's why. Yeah. And then this one, it took me about three weeks to start feeling normal. I yeah. still feel really tired and stuff, but um, I was like strong, and I was like my mental clarity was pretty pretty solid. Yeah. But uh, yeah. it, it's it's uh, I was telling Paul like he was so depleted that his his body's like burning through shit. Like it took him forever t- for his glycogen source to finally like kind of come up, like. Because your body will burn through it because it thinks it's going to starve again. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think once you get that leveled out and then accumulate a little bit more body fat, that's when you start feeling normal. Because me and Paul are big. Well, you are too. 
Yeah. We're all bigger guys naturally. So like it's it's not normal for us to stay super lean. Yeah. Like we don't feel good at seven, eight percent body fat. I mean, I don't. You, like, your body's crying. Your body's crying for yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's like, please feed me more until yeah. I get to a comfortable body fat so I can feel like I'm not dying. <laughs> you're, you're right. So, yeah, so I, I felt like the food almost doesn't help until your body fat is where it needs to be, right? Because, it's like, you could eat all the food in the world you want, but if you're still, like, single-digit body fat, kind of still feel shitty, you know? So I know some people, like, we, we had Jordan on, and he doesn't push the food out the gate. He kind of stays on a diet basically until after the health phase. I feel like if I did that, I would feel pretty shitty that I would feel even more shitty because, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, because yeah. He, yeah. he basically stays single digit body fat for another two months. But Jordan felt great during prep. I don't, I don't think he, any of us feel great <laughs> during prep. You know what I'm saying? You know, he, he had a whole different metabolism. Like he, he said he didn't go below like what, 400, 500 carbs. I mean, that's yeah. a whole... I think the lowest he said was 300 grams. Okay, okay, okay. It's still crazy high. That's like a high day for me and my fucking <laughs> prep. Yeah, so... Fuck. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I I think I function the best, far to put a number to it. Once I hit 12%, like, I feel fucking amazing. Like, yeah. healthiest to be. So... But see, you see why it's important to have a podcast like this? And talk about these things because sometimes you feel like you're in the boat by yourself. Like I didn't know anybody felt like this. In my head, I'm like, I feel like everybody feels great in their rebound. I'm, I'm watching people. I'm like, everybody looks like they're, they're having a good time. But I was so tired and sluggish. I'm like, bro, this can't, this can't be normal. Why am I so tired? But now talking to you, I'm like, so a lot of people do feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the way we are, like, like Paul just said, he's gonna keep grinding through it. I feel thin. Like I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm being a bitch. So I'm like, I'm gonna just grind to it. You know, grind through okay. it. And then, I end up feeling worse. I'm like, what the fuck, you know? So sometimes. <laughs> Why do you think energy drinks are so like high up on the echelon in the fitness world? You got to exactly. stay until you make it. You just, exactly, bro. You're just exactly. thriving on uh, adrenaline and energy drinks. <laughs> well, well, what I caught on to also, uh, uh, I want to say, yo, what's up, Justin? I want to acknowledge Justin so he's not just sitting there. Okay. <laughs> well, it's too much for harm, but I'm here. What there up, Justin? Go. No, but uh, I noticed too when I'm on orals, like for like a few a few months, bro, I get like lethargic, super lethargic, bro. You know, to the point that it makes the prep harder because I'm like, I'm, I just feel kind of shitty. So that's something I, I might have to uh, maybe only run it for a really short amount of time, or maybe not run it at all. I mean, I don't think it makes that huge of a difference besides the last two weeks, maybe Halo. But anything like the Rini, I mean, how much results do you really get from Rini if, if we're being real, right? It's not yeah. it's kind of minimal. I don't think it's that crazy, bro. You know what we did at this year on my prep? I don't think we started orals till like seven weeks out. Any any orals. See? You see? Yeah. I, I, I feel I feel I feel pretty shitty on oh. orals. I gotta be I remember uh, uh, I think just on, on the last podcast we talked about that the especially like like an anadrol, you want anadrol and prep. It's good to block your appetite, so maybe you don't get as hungry. But eventually, man, is you just feel like shit. You know, you can barely get any food down, and you don't feel like working out sometimes. You know, yeah, yeah man. Hey, Justin, the, the the man of the hour. What's up, man? How you feeling? I'm doing good, man. I just now got in. There you go. I, I literally got a microphone just because Justin was coming on. I said I gotta, I gotta get a mic. Be be on, be on my A game, man. Can you guys hear me fine, or do I need to get my AirPods? No, I can't. Yeah, it good. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. It sounds good. You got back home from the gym, or you got back in town? No, 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 I got back from the gym, but I actually had to make an errand before the gym, and I didn't realize they're doing construction, like, on the way on that road to my house. Yeah. So when I was coming home, I was like, fuck, I'm going to have to take a detour. Yeah, okay, okay. So I went around the turnpike, and it took me about an extra 15 or so minutes. Okay, okay. So a couple, a few weeks ago, that was the first time I actually met you in person, which is crazy. Yep. Because, uh, I started working with you, uh, I think, for that, that last show in L.A., maybe 2018, I want to say. 2018. I think it was 18, yeah. I think it was 18. And, we, and we've and we talked a bunch of times, but I just never had, never actually seen you in person. But one thing I will say is you, you're a lot bigger in person than, than I thought I thought you would be at this point. 
Oh. I, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I don't feel it, but I'll take it as a compliment. Yeah. I'm like, which one is Paul? Which one? Which one is Paul? Which one is Paul? <laughs> but yeah, so, hey, Justin, uh, it's it's funny, man. You pulled my food back, right? I was, oh, this feels great. Mm -hmm. I'm telling Paul, I was like, man, I'm fucking hungry, and so I have my <laughs> cheat meals. And I was like, I told Paul yesterday, I was like, it's so fucked up. I get tired of feeling bloated and gross all the time, and then I eat my cheat meal. And I chase that feeling. So I'm all fucking stuffed to the fucking gills. And I'm like, I think I have a problem, Paul. It's <laughs> <laughs> like the, the life of a bodybuilder in a way, man. Because when you're in prep, you're always fucking hungry. You always think about food. And then when you're off season, you're sick of food. There is like no middle ground for a bodybuilder that wants to progress and get better. You're either yeah. eating to the point you're stuffed or the opposite you're dieting to the point that you sit around on instagram or pinterest and you look at food all day yeah, yeah. you pull like, back a little bit and i feel the slightest bit of hunger and i <laughs> i need to feel like shit <laughs> yeah. back um back when i was trying to get my pro card you know 2012 you know i guess instagram was probably around at that time but it wasn't yeah. popular uh we didn't have like pinterest and all that stuff so I would sit around and watch the Food Network in prep. I, and that's literally <laughs> like, that is the most torture you could possibly do to yourself. But like when I got off work at like five o'clock, you know, I would train by like 530. I was home by 730. I had like three or four hours to kill before bed and I lived by myself. So sat around and watched the Food Network it was the worst idea ever to do. I used to, I used watch, to watch the food challenges too, like where the guys yeah. would get like a twenty thousand calorie binge meal, and I'm like, I'm sitting here wanting to do it, and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Yeah. I told Paul that I do that on YouTube. <laughs> like, I can't wait to do that shit after. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean, uh, I could have watched it on YouTube back then too. I don't know why I didn't. I just watched it on the TV. Yeah, they had Man versus Food back then. Yes, that was it. That was one. That of them. was the one. Yeah, that guy got fat as fuck. <laughs> I think, I think there's two different kinds of people on prep. I feel like there's people who can't be around any junk food whatsoever. They can't look at it. They have to turn turn their heads. And there's people that watch food all day long. You know, I I, I feel like in the beginning of the prep, I want to look at the food, but by the end of the prep, I kind of just don't even want to see it. You know, I, I don't I don't even want to see it. Uh, I don't really get that many. I don't get cravings during prep anymore. I, nowadays, I just get tired, man. I just feel like 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 shit. We we were actually talking about the rebound phase before you got on here, Justin. But how did you feel on the rebound phase? Did you feel good? Were there times that you felt like shit, or times that you actually felt good on the rebound phase? Probably eighty percent of the time, I felt good, but um, it depended on the prep itself and how I would do things. Yeah. I remember after the Chicago Pro, I started taking over. So I started prepping myself and doing things. And I remember uh, Factory had prepped me for that show. He, in my opinion, you know, I have nothing but love and respect for Factory. So, like, th this is not nothing bad. Mm -hmm. But I think he did a little too much cardio with me. He had me in an hour and a half on the step for a day. And if you know me and you know my metabolism and know the way that I eat, I don't need to do that kind of stuff. But either way, that's neither here nor there. So right after the show, I just didn't feel comfortable going from 90 minutes a day to zero minutes a day. So I started with, uh, I think I did an hour of cardio for like two weeks. And then I backed it off to like 40 minutes for two weeks. I did this in a very, very gradual phase. And I started slowly increasing my food. So for the first two to three weeks, it just felt like a miserable extended prep. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was beating myself, beating myself up for absolutely no reason. But every time I would take my own progress pictures, I was very pleased with what I was looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, I was putting on the right weight, the right size, and the right places and staying hard. And that being said, I also feel like, well, I don't have to say this. I think anyone who's seen my progress would arguably, or sorry, cannot arguably say that that was the best offseason I ever had from 2013 to 2014 because when I came back, people knew who I was in 2014 because I won shows and I stood out. 
Yeah. But it paid off. I remember after that show, though, uh, we were at Junior Nationals, and this was 2014, and there was a whole group of us there. And I went up there to support a guy that I prepped for that show. He's a friend of mine. And we went out to eat, and this was it's kind of a funny story because um, they didn't know. I think I started my prep for – I think I started in like February that year, like January or February, somewhere around that time frame. So it had been almost six months, and I hadn't had a cheat in six months. Mm -hmm. After the show, I didn't cheat. Like So my cheat meal after I won the Orlando Pro was a steak and potato at the steakhouse at the restaurant, right back to diet the next day, mostly because, not because it, I'm like that anal about it, Mostly because I knew I had multiple photo shoots coming up. And I want to look good in my photo shoots, right? Everybody does. And then after the photo shoots is over, it's like, well, shit, you know, I'm doing good now. Why why cheat? Why why, why do this? Like, you know, and that, like, so that's when I prepped myself in 2014. So my cardio was minimal. Like, I think I did, like, 30 minutes of cardio mm -hmm. was about it. So the tapering off process was nothing. And my food was much, much higher. So... As soon as I went in the off season, felt great. Like it was like a, a switch; it just flipped on. Like I just, I felt human. I felt alive, and not only did I feel alive, man, I felt euphoric. Not because I just want to show, but because my body was just like cranking on all cylinders. Yeah. And I remember I went to juniors. Everyone was like baffled that I hadn't had a cheat meal in six months. And I guess most people can't fathom the thought of that. To me, it didn't bother me back then. Like, mm -hmm. food did not phase me. Like, that contest prep, the woman that I was dating at the time had two kids. So when, you have, when you're in the house with two kids, you can't expect the kids to eat chicken and rice. So you're always going to be around junk food. And it never bothered me one bit. You know, you were saying there's two different types of people. Mm -hmm. There's the ones that can be around it, doesn't bother them at all. And there's the ones that just cannot be around it. I was the guy that I could watch you smash 5,000 calories right in front of me. I'd be like, cool, man. That's all you. Have fun. Enjoy it. I hope you did. And didn't that's bother all you. <laughs> what? <laughs> that, that's all you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. And like, I remember the kids would be like, you know, you want some of this, Justin. And I'm like, I want it, but I want to win much worse than I want your food. So I'm going to sit yeah. right here on my hungry ass and watch you eat. And that's it. And it didn't bother me. Um, then I remember we go to the restaurant and of all places, cause it was late, you know, that show didn't get out to like, I don't know, like 11, 30, 12 o'clock. We go to fucking Denny's and, uh, I think it was Denny's. Mm -hmm. It was one of those little chain, you know, restaurants that stays open all night. And I'm the type of guy that when I order food, I like to order, I like to eat, man. I don't like, I'm not the guy, I, you couldn't take me to fondue and make me happy. Like, I don't like to have this. Like, I don't want an appetizer. Wait 20 minutes, get my entree. Wait 20 minutes, get my. Fuck that. I like to have it all. Just bring it all at once. As long as it's not ice cream and going to melt on me, bring it all, all at once. And obviously, you know, like most people, you start with like an appetizer. You start with your savory and then you get to your sweets at the end, right? Mm -hmm. I remember I kept it basic. I ordered a brunch burger. And I ordered a uh, this ice cream dessert, whatever it was. I don't remember at the time. And I told the server very specifically. I said, bring it all at once. Just bring it at the same time. And uh, I said, because I'm going to woof this burger down. And wow, I'm get down. Two minutes. I was like, that ice cream ain't going to melt by the time I get this burger down. <laughs> so this bitch brings out the dessert as an appetizer. I just looked at it. I was like, you can take this shit away. Like, you want to. I was just so mad that, like, I went six months without a cheat meal and you fucked it up for me. Like, <laughs> supposed to be special. Fucked up my whole experience. <laughs> like, I had to, like, I was so excited yeah. to have this. Like, I wasn't even going to do it. But all my friends convinced me, like, dude, come on, man, live a little bit. Yeah. So I did it and it just turned out to be a dud. <laughs> and I felt, I felt like I was being selfish because. There was three people at that table that just competed. And I'm like, they went through a lot more shit than I just went through. Yeah. And I'm the one that's complaining about the food. So I was like, this is not right. Hey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, but um, 
to, to be honest, man, like as far as the rebound goes, it usually takes me the full eight weeks to feel normal again. But I think sometimes that's based on how extreme your prep is. We were just talking about uh, Jordan Hutchinson. His preps are so smooth and like easy. Uh, I don't, I don't know, if, I don't say easy, but not as hard as most people. So he feels great. Rebound feels great. The whole nine, right? Whereas, um, you know. When you work with me, you, you kind of seen how difficult it is for me to get in shape. And this last prep, bro, it, it was so extreme, man. I got up to three hours of cardio. I went down to 1,200 calories, right? Um, that probably wasn't smart because I, I did lose muscle. Like, in hindsight, I definitely lost some of my legs and my back. But I, I had to be in shape, man. I'm like, I, I can't step on stage not in shape again. You know, so on, on the back end, I was so tired. The training was horrible. I, I kept trying to train just as hard, just as heavy. And at some point, I was like, okay, this is not one of those situations where you can power through it. And I just started working out basically like like probably, probably how most people work out nowadays. Just just getting a little pump and just, uh, you know, maybe three to six working sets per body part. And I finally felt better. And now I'm back to training hard again. But I think w when your prep is that extreme, uh, I think you just need some rest on the back end. You just can't recover, man. Just can't recover. Yeah, and I agree with you a hundred percent because you are like it's like what you literally what you just said. It's how hard your prep is going into it. Like my best look ever, and it, there's a couple of shows that we can argue that on. But I really like my look at the Golden State. I only prepped for five weeks, and I did 25 minutes of cardio. That was it. Yeah. So, needless to say, I felt good during prep and after prep. I mean, I was tired, but you know. Nothing to the level that you have been. I've ne I mean, I've never been there. So, like, the best thing for you probably to do after the show, I think this would probably reset you up here and inside as well. Mm -hmm. Probably don't go crazy with the food. Enjoy, obviously, rehydrate immediately. And then have a meal out with your friends and family. But mm -hmm. Sunday, you know, you said you went to 1,200 calories. Mm -hmm. Bump it to 2,000, 2,500 for a week, yeah. but don't train, don't do cardio, keep it clean, just rest your body, rest your mind, don't even work, it, it, as long as you're financially okay, yeah. don't even work, just yeah. stay home and just decompress, because you do go through hell to get into shit, like your, your preps do suck, I'm not going to lie, like, yeah. <laughs> they suck, so... I would say just don't don't binge eat during that time and gain 30 or 40 pounds. Keep the food clean. Keep it modest. Increase the food to a, a healthy level, so to say, and just stop the cardio. And then after a week, maybe 10 days, get back into the gym. I don't think there's a reason to acclimate to it. I think you should be able to go right back into training hard and heavy and then slowly go up on the food from there. And yeah. just see how your body responds, you know, every three, four days. And I just feel like that'll get rid of a lot of your mental fatigue. Just eliminating that cardio, eliminating training, and eliminating stress of knowing that you have a competition ahead of you. Yeah, yeah. I think that that will probably be best. I I did probably the, the opposite. So I kept my food high, but I was training like six, seven days a week. And my cardio, I, I try to keep my cardio in so I wouldn't blow up. So... I was doing a lot of cardio, a lot of training, a lot of food, which was probably just overdoing it again. I would have been better off probably eating less and taking it easy. or yeah. not It'll it. give your digestive system, because I also think this, mm -hmm. that when you go from 1,200 calories to say, I don't know, 4,000, just making numbers up here. I don't know what you did, mm -hmm. but like if you went to 4,000, keep in mind, that's a big jump on your digestive track. And that's also going to like kind of give you brain fog. It's like if you went out and ate like, um, you know, one of those man versus food challenges, right? Yeah. You go out and eat 20,000 calories in one sitting, you're going to be sitting on the couch the rest of the day. Exactly. Either probably from your stomach, but also you're going to be fatigued as hell because your body is trying to figure out what the hell just happened. Yeah, so sure. I think, you know, going too high on the food might actually make you sluggish as well. Like you're going to be hungry. Yes. There's no doubt about it. You're going to be hungry on 2,500 or 3,000 calories after what you just went through, plus being lean. But one thing a lot of people always conflict, and I'm I'm highly guilty of this. I'm very, very guilty of this. Mm -hmm. 
We cannot main, maintain stage conditioning year round. As much as we, you know, like, you know how it is, like, right after the competition, you go have some food, you pose, and you're like, holy fuck, man, I look great. I look good. You yeah. want to keep that look. You know, nobody wants to let go of that. Like, I was, I was addicted to it. Like, you know, I'd go to the gym, like, two days after my show, and I'm veiny and vascular, I'm pumped, I'm full. I wanted that look 365 days of the year. But it's just not feasible to keep the body fat that low every single day. If you do try that, you're going to feel like shit 365 days of the year. <clears throat> unless, unless you're uh, Michael like it, and you can just, you can just stay. Michael's the guy, man. He's <laughs> he's like the genetic anomaly that can like literally his thing. I wonder if he still does it. Somebody have to send him a message. Mm -hmm. He used to like I wouldn't say binge eat on him, but he used to eat a shitload of Twizzlers. Mm -hmm. I don't know why Twizzlers. <laughs> that was my least favorite candy. You give me some Skittles, Three Musketeers, or some Snickers, I'll tear that shit up. Twizzling, like, yeah. I'm not a fan. It doesn't do it to me. He likes Twizzlers, man. and he likes he likes fast food, too. Well, so, he, he actually goes to, he trains at both things. Yeah, I, I've seen some videos of him training up there recently. Yeah, um, he looks the same. He stays way. straight exactly. all the time. Yeah. All the fucking time. 24-7. And, and the thing about Michael is I'm going to, he's probably the perfect example to talk about with that. The, the example to say that it's not feasible for most people. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people want to use Roman Fritz as the example, because Roman is always in shape. But the thing about Roman is Roman don't eat junk food. Roman trains seven days a week. And Roman is very strict and very dedicated to the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Michael is able to, I don't know if Michael trains three days a week or seven days a week. But Michael can slack on his diet and still look absolutely retarded. Yeah. And that, that's just mind blowing to me. That's insane. I I, I don't know how, how that's even possible, to be honest, but he, he does it. He does it, you know. It, it doesn't make sense because, you know, you've seen like little skinny guys who can eat fast food all day long and they stay lean. Mm -hmm. Usually they don't have any muscle. Yeah. He's got, an, you, I, I, I associate that with probably hyperthyroidism. Like mm -hmm. when you have a guy who can literally eat McDonald's three times a day and he weighs 140 pounds, say he doesn't work out, you know, just a normal looking guy, skinny little guy. Mm -hmm. But like I associate with hyperthyroidism, and I may be wrong on that, but like with Michael, he's got muscle and he stays that lean and he doesn't have to try. Well, I mean, he doesn't have to try with his diet, that is. Exactly. So it's just a very unique situation. Yeah, he uh and I mean even though he shredded, he still I would assume he's probably on TRT now. And he still has a, a, a decent amount of muscle. Um I noticed he walks with a limp. So I knew he had like a knee injury or something, but it's probably worse yeah. than we, it's probably worse than we noticed because if he's limping, that's that's pretty bad. But I mean it's, it's probably it's, gotten worse if I had to guess over the years. If I'm not mistaken, someone told me it was uh he had it. Since he was before bodybuilding. Yeah. And if you look at his stage pictures when he was in his prime, one leg was bigger than the other one. Yeah. Not by a lot, but it was noticeable if you look at it. I mean, when I did the Golden State, it was me and Michael in the final call out. Mm -hmm. And you could see that one leg was a little bit bigger than the other one. Not from the back, you couldn't tell it, but from the front poses, you could see it. Yeah. So he's had some type of trauma. I don't know if it's nerves. I don't know if it's joint, muscular. I, I don't know what it is, but he's had something going on. I think it's his right leg, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, something going on there. But he wasn't limping back then. No. So whatever's going on may have progressed, and that may be why we don't see Michael on stage anymore. Well, but, you know, you had mentioned him being on TRT. Mm -hmm. I don't talk to Michael on a personal level, and I would never get into his business if I did. Mm -hmm. But just because I know how much of a freak show he actually is, Mm -hmm. I'd be willing to bet he's not on TRT, man. Like when people, the reason I say that is I remember when he, he won the team universe one year when it was drug testing. And I remember Palumbo interviewed him and he was a heavy or a super heavyweight. And you could just see by the look on Palumbo's face. He's like, yeah, and you're natural too. And he's like, yep. And you know, Palum and Palumbo's <laughs> thinking in his head, like you lying motherfucker. But I actually believe he was. I believe Michael was that talented. It's like people thought that Ronnie wasn't natural when he turned pro. Sorry, guys, but you can't just up the dose and gain 80 pounds of muscle. It doesn't work mm -hmm. like that. 
That's the difference between a naturally genetically gifted person and then they hop on the sauce and they explode. Michael kind of did the same thing. 100%. I got a uh, one of my neighbors. He's also like my training partner uh, most of the days of the week. And when I met this guy, I would always see him come in. First of all, he was working out in the in the apartment gym with like 20-pound dumbbells, right? I would see this guy with dominoes and burgers every day. And I'm like, Bo, that's what you eat? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, Bo, like, how many days do you train? He's like, three days a week. He literally looks like a miniature, like a 180-pound Phil Heath. And I'm like, bro, I was like, bro, you can, you can, I can prep you for a show next year and you'll win whatever weight club. I mean, you'll probably be like a lightweight. I don't know. Light, lightweight. You, you would win any show you do, like naturally. And he's like, I've seen people like that before, man. I mean, even Phil, when he was playing, playing college basketball, mm. all he needed was six months of training and he could win a bodybuilding show. And I, I can only assume back then playing basketball, he probably didn't really follow any type of diets. Yeah, yeah. So, not so, like a bodybuilding diet. No, so some people it's hard for people to believe it. Some people genetically they just they just complete different. Uh, we go to zoo culture, right? And nobody believes he's natural, obviously. Like, cause you have a bunch of like skinny twenty year olds that that's on a full cycle of trend. That's like you know that look like pretty much nothing, but nobody's gonna believe he's natural. So I'm like, don't even don't even mention it because everybody's just gonna talk shit about you anyway. So just. Just yeah, it's working. something that, like, at this day and age, if you are one of those elite guys who can look crazy natural, it's almost like it's almost like it's insulting, not insulting, but like imagine being natural and just have to ignore the fact that you're natural because you know if you say anything, you're going to catch nothing but hate. Mm -hmm. Like, I had a guy, and of all places, I'll tell you, this is Planet Fitness. Imagine that. Um, the show that I went to in Georgia, I, there was this guy in there. I walked into the gym, go in the bathroom. It was a very awkward moment. Like, I've been off gear since January 2017. Like, literally, like, January 1st, 2017 was, like, my, my last actual cycle, so to say. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm still bigger than 99% of society. And no, I'm on TRT. Like, I'm very wide open about that. Uh, I'm, I'm not natty, so to say, mm -hmm. per se. But anyway, this guy, like, leans in. He, honestly, he looked like he'd never been in the fucking gym in his life. He gets me in the locker room. He gets, like, really, really close to me. And he's like, man, your arms are huge. And I was like, oh, kind of like thanks. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you want some good shit right now, aren't you? And I, I looked at him, and I was like, is that really something you should say to a stranger in a bathroom at a gym you don't even know? <laughs> and, like, it it, it kind of escalated a little bit. And I, he kind of, like, almost like he's going to square up with me. And I was like, oh, fuck, we can do that, too, if you want. <laughs> but, like, my point is he couldn't fathom the fact that I wasn't on cycle. He couldn't fathom the fact that I wasn't taking gram after gram after gram of gear because I looked halfway decent and he looked like – a pile of mashed potatoes. Yeah. You, you just got to deal with it, man. It's something you just got to yeah. understand and deal with it. You, I wasn't going to tell him about the TRT. I wasn't going to tell him that, you know, hey, I used to be bigger. I wasn't I wasn't even going to get into that. It's just the fact that, like, you meet a stranger at the gym, and then you get in my personal space and say, like, yeah, man, you're on some good shit, aren't you? And I'm like, well, really? You, you had no like, business walking into his Planet Fitness looking like the way you look. <laughs> Uh, He's like, yeah, you don't know. fucking belong here, sir. Yeah, exactly. You, you can't walk in there. Oh. Well, you know what's funny is I went up there. I This was uh, on Saturday. And what I've been doing is I've been doing a keto diet. And on Saturdays, I pretty much eat what I want from like 6 p.m. and on. Like, it's like me, baby. <laughs> yeah, our $110 house of pot. Yeah. Um, so... I went in there and I wanted to check my weights. I wanted to see what I weighed. And they didn't have a bathroom scale. I'm like, huh, I'll go ask them at the front desk. And this is why I don't support Planet Fitness. Um, I went in there and I said, hey, do you guys have a, a body weight scale? And this little snarky bitch like, looks at me with this, like, she had a tone about it, too. And all I do is ask for scale. She goes, nah, we don't do that here. We're a judgment-free zone. And I'm like, a scale. <laughs> Is about judgment. 
<laughs> like it ain't like when you step on the scale, it ain't like it puts the number on a big screen for the whole gym to see it. It's a exactly. little tiny number. Exactly. I was like, whatever. It's like, have a good day, miss. I should have called her ma'am because she was like 20 years old. I'll insult her by calling her <laughs> old. <laughs> oh man. Yo, Paul, yeah, I, I want to ask you about uh, about the uh the Legion. From from what I hear from people, uh it's like uh it's really well ran and the athletes love it. How was your experience at at the at the Berkeley? It was dope, man. It was definitely really. It was definitely a really well it ran well. Mm -hmm. uh, really organized, really organized. Yeah, um, and we had moved really, really smooth in the back too. So, I mean, they. I feel like they should move it to Vegas. Like, why? Why is it in Reno? Like, who wants to go to Reno? Like, that, that I can't. That I can't <laughs> tell you. But that'd probably be a better idea, though. Yeah. <laughs> then you go to Reno after that to be more diverse, like because. You know, they already have the, the Olympia has been there for years and they have the USA's out there. I, this is my opinion. I think they just want shows in different areas. But like if it were me and I was moving a show in that region, I'd want to go to Denver. OK, great. why not Denver? But like you said, Reno, I mean, a lot of athletes, I don't know how you guys do things, but like after the show's over, I like to turn shows into mini vacations. 100%, yeah. And what the hell are you going to do in Reno? Go to Lake Tahoe? Yeah, there's really much <laughs> yeah, out there. That's the best thing you can do. That's about it. it. Stay out there I'll and gamble with old people. I mean, I'll at least it's better than, like, say, Denver, you know, thing there's saw. things to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Low-key, I, I wish they would bring back shows to L.A. They used to have shows that there. Y'all remember the, um, it was in Culver City. What's that place? Yeah, yeah, that, the auditorium. Yeah, they used to have a bunch of shows. They used to have the the um, cow the cow there, the cow cow state championships there. Well, they had they had everything there. Instead of Anaheim, it was there. So they were, they were going from San Diego to um, to there. Yeah. But the COVID, whenever COVID hit, whatever, that's when they ended up switching everything over to uh, Anaheim because they, they they just stood there. Because because COVID likes to attack people in COVID more than Anaheim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, depends where you're at. <laughs> but it's like on which mayor you got exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's like I mean, An Anaheim is cool, but it would be dope to just have it right there in LA. You know, you could people could come go to Golds and stuff. But Anaheim, I don't really. I guess you go to Disney World or something. I don't know, but yeah, but I I think Anaheim wise, like this, like Justin says, you know, if you're, if you're from out of state, or whatever, and you want a vacation or whatever, I think that's a better spot because there's so much more to do out there. You know, yeah. so many more, so many more nice, like nicer places to go. No, Anaheim. Anaheim, it's just, just a nicer area. It, it, I mean, it, a vacation. Why not? Why not do San Diego? That too. I mean, I like San Diego. I like I like San Diego. I like San Diego. Yeah. But being that we got Justin on, uh, I, I wanted to give the penny on a couple of these shows. I'm sure you we probably already seen the pics, but I'm gonna pull up some pics. Um, what did you think about? Was that the? It, which was the show that Regan won? That was Italy or, or Spain? I don't know. They flip flopped him and Nathan on two of them. So Nathan won one. I think he won Italy. Yeah, that was the okay. Europa. Huh? Yeah. So I, I've seen people make a case. <coughs> uh, Zay Zay even did on, on one of the podcasts, you know, and they make some points. But you know, I still have my personal opinion. I wanted to get Justin's opinion on uh, whichever show that was, the Italy or both Italy and France. Like, how did you feel about? Regan winning versus uh, Nathan winning. All right. So, you know, I, when I state my opinion about things, I, I do want to state that because uh, I know how quickly people are to get offended and stuff. For sure. And I respect both Nathan and Regan. Like, I consider them both. I wouldn't say that we're friends if we don't chat all the time. But if I see them, I'm very friendly with them. And I like them and I respect them. I think they're both great athletes. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I think Nathan demolished him in both shows. Just completely obliterated him in both shows. Mm -hmm. Now, who has the most potential? Reagan's got a lot more potential than Nathan. Mm -hmm. I dog made a really weird noise, but, you know, Nathan's had two torn biceps, and he still beat Nathan. So, man, are you going to make it or not? Um, you know, Nathan's had two torn biceps, and... Uh -huh. He still beat Reagan, but Reagan's issue is he's just not hard enough. Mm -hmm. And it's like he can get 90%, and that's as 
that's it. You know, we have we have yet to ever see a hundred percent Reagan Grimes. And like I said, I'm a Reagan. I like him as a person, and I'm also a Reagan Grimes fan. So by no means am I hating on this guy. Yeah. But if he, you know, Reagan's not a kid anymore. He's not 20 years old anymore. You know, Reagan's he's 30. He's got to be almost 30 at this point. I think he's and it's like. 30. It's like, dude, you don't have that many more years left to to be a top level pro bodybuilder. You need to give him some semi glutide, give him some nicotine. I don't care what you got to give him. <laughs> give him something to shut that appetite down and pick the energy up and get his ass in shape. Because his Instagram pictures clearly do not like his Instagram would demolish this. But there's also filters and edits and stuff, and I'm not saying he does it. He could just be missing his peak. Mm -hmm. Um. I think Reagan has a lot of potential. I think he's a very seems like a really good guy, mm -hmm. but he did not beat Nathan here. But bodybuilding is a business, and I don't like that side of bodybuilding because I think the best man should win regardless of how anybody else feels. Like I'm all about right, right is right and wrong is wrong, and every athlete on that stage has – in my opinion, has uh, they, they should have the right to go into that show and get treated fairly. And I do not feel that Nathan was treated fairly here because Reagan's got a huge following. I don't know, like three, four, five million, probably ten. I don't know. He's got a big following. And Reagan's fans are diehard Reagan Grimes fans. So you got to ask yourself, who's going to sell more tickets for the Olympia? Nathan Diasha or Reagan Grimes. Reagan's either going to bring them to the or bring them physically to the show, or he's going to sell the uh, the pay per view live stream online. AKA Reagan makes more money for the sport than Nathan. So they call the first show right. They give it to Nathan. They realize, hey, we got both of these guys in Spain next weekend. If there's any way fucking possible, give the next one to Reagan. That way, we got them both Olympia qualified, and everybody's happy. But see, I don't like that. That ain't right because, again, Nathan showed up. He did the work. He put the time in. He got in shape. That's your winner, in my opinion. Again, no disrespect to, to Reagan at all. If Reagan showed up in the conditioning that Nathan gets in, game over. Yeah. Game over. But he don't, and it's just that. You know, he don't. Have you and, have you guys seen Regan in person before? Yes. Yes. Oh, but, but have you seen him? Okay, have you seen him recently? Because he, he was a lot smaller before, I think. I saw him in 2020. That was the last time I seen him. Okay, so he, I will say he, he looks, at least now, he looks really impressive in person, really round. He was but, big then, too. Okay, okay. But he's not, he, like you said, he's not hard. His muscles never look hard. You don't see one vein on his body. Not that veins are judged, but he doesn't look like hard. He always looks really round, but he looks soft. I got to be honest. He, he he never looks hard. Even on stage, he doesn't have that grainy look. And Nathan, exactly. I saw Nathan maybe uh, one day out or two days out with Jansen at LA Fitness before. That was for the Cal Pro. And Nathan, he was hard through his T-shirt, you can see. You know, you can literally... You can see like his forearm, everything's so dry, and you know it's just a different look. But he's also round as well, you know. Honestly, I think I think Milos was scared to bring him down because I don't I don't know if he gets any harder because you, you remember with Dorian Hamilton, he would bring him down, try to get him really hard, and he still wouldn't get hard. He would just be smaller. So well, you I know, one thing that I think, and on that subject, you know, since we're talking about training and stuff as well, you said you seen him in the gym. Yeah, I've only watched Reagan train one time, so I, I hate to sit here and say that I'm judging his training based on only watching one session. Mm -hmm. But I think we all agree with this because we can compare hit. We can compare some history here. Yeah, if you look at the guys who has been very hard, dense, and grainy, what's one thing that they all have in common? They all lift heavy fucking mm -hmm. weights. Heavy and hard and intense. Yeah, sure. And I'm not saying I literally I've, I've watched Reagan train one time. Maybe it was his, supposed to be his day off, and he just went in for a pump. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But when I seen him train, 
again, I'm not his coach. I'm not his trainer. And I like to mind my own business. I don't say anything. When I see something wrong over here, I don't say nothing. It's not my place. But what I saw was about 50% of what I thought he was capable of doing. And like, look at Dorian. Heavy, hard, rainy. Ronnie. Jay, all these, I mean, Jay didn't lift stupid heavy weights, but if you watch Jay Cutler's intensity, Jay was very intense in the gym Perfect. and his muscle detail shows on that too. Yeah. You know, like he didn't just, like Reagan has so much potential. I would, like I said, I, I like Reagan. I would love to have Reagan set up camp here at my house mm -hmm. and let me train him physically. I'll take the time out of my day to drive him to the gym train him for 16 weeks for a show and you'll see a completely different Reagan Grimes. Now I'm going to be cooking the food. Ain't going to be no Uber eats. There ain't going to be shit delivered to my house. You're going to do exactly what I say and we'll see the Reagan Grimes that everybody's been wanting to see. Yeah. I think, I think everybody can't look like Heidi, right? That's why Heidi is Heidi, but I think everybody can get hard enough, you know, cause uh, I kind of felt the same way about myself. I'm like, as hard as I'm dieting and cardio and training, I never get hard enough. But throughout the years, I'm like, I am getting harder though. So it's possible. It, it's it, there's always a way. There's always a way. You just got to figure figure it out, figure out what the hell the way is, you know. And a lot of times, it's it's like the more basic and uh, I don't know the word. I guess the the more the more basic you can keep your your program, the better you'll look like. With the like, yes, I yes. used to do like the crest bars and the you know, the uh, pro you got protein pancakes and all this shit. All that shit is not, uh, if not, I don't think it's conducive for your best look, even though somebody might say, Well, Sam Sulla can do that and still be shredded, but it's like it, it's different just because one person can get away you with it. You got like, that one percent that can get away with it, exactly. And and if you're not that guy, then you're gonna have to take out, you might have to take out the crystal light, even the diet soda. If you have to, you have to. But some people, you know, Ronnie could put barbecue sauce and crystal light and soda all the way to the show. But, you know, we're not Ronnie Coleman. So we, we, we can't do it, Ronnie. Better. Yeah, exactly, man. You know, people uh, like bodybuilding is hard. And it's something that, you know, every it varies from one person to the next on how difficult it's going to be. Exactly. You know, it's like, um, for example, if I were to go to a boxing gym and I boxed for five years with the best trainers in the world. Yeah. I could get in the ring with a old retired Mike Tyson. I yeah. wouldn't make it 20 seconds. Yeah. Literally, yeah. I would not make it 20 seconds without losing my teeth. But yeah. Mike was cut for that. You know, when you have guys like Hadi, Ronnie, those guys, they can get away with that little extra and still be the best in the world. Phil, you know, yeah. same way. Um, they could do that, you know. But the other guys, you know, it, it's a level. You know, some people like like Joe's prep was a lot harder than Paul's prep. Uh -huh. Just two night, different, two different night, bodies, day, two night and day harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's two different bodies, two different genetics, two different metabolisms. It's it's apples and oranges, complete physiques don't even look the same. Nothing looks the same. Yeah, I kind I kind of like that about Joe because if you're from the outside watching in, and I'm seeing him with shredded glutes six weeks out. In your head, you're like, oh, he must have one of those easy preps. But then when you talk to him, you're like, oh, no, he he he, he suffers as much as the, you know, the, the hardest working guy. He just he just does it. <laughs> he just does it anyway, you know what I'm saying? Which is, which is kind of dope to, to see that because, you know. Yeah, so you got a chance to see him, like, in the gym and stuff. I mean, I see the pictures. But, see, I've met Joe before, so I knew what he looked like before, yeah. like, in person. Yeah. And I also prepped him for the cow, so I knew he looked like on stage. But like, you know, some people look really, really good on Instagram, for even sure. without the filter. They're they're very photogenic. Hundred percent. And then when you see them in person, it's it's almost disappointing. Not the same. Joe's the opposite of that. Like his yeah. pictures do absolutely zero justice, nothing whatsoever. Yeah. And then when you see him in person, it's like, oh shit, he is big. He is fucking hard. Hundred percent. Even but even the stage picks because. Like, like, I guarantee you, this competition, all of them wrote him off. I guarantee yeah. everyone, the USA's, nobody had him winning that show. Yeah. I believed it. I knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's why I didn't give a fuck to brag or post about it. I said, you know, I don't care what these motherfuckers say. Let them think that Eric is going to win the show. That's fine. We'll just show up and do what we do. I feel like anybody who saw him in person knew, 
But if he didn't, but honestly, even the stage picks though, because like when the stage picks came out after prejudging, everybody was everybody thought it was close. But honestly, being there, I don't think I, I don't think it was close. It was, I had some, but between Paul and Jasmine, I had some pretty good quality videos. Mm. I thought it was a slam dunk. On the videos that I saw, like, again, I don't know if it was 4K, 5K videos, but whatever phones you guys have is pretty damn good. My phone's like a potato phone. <laughs> like, you ain't getting shit from me. It's good. <laughs> but um, I like the videos. I'm like, all right, it's like, we got this. This is, yeah. this is done. The only thing I was worried about was, again, from a political standpoint, yeah. you know, Eric is – and Eric Eric will be a pro, and he is a good bodybuilder. <laughs> He sure. just needs another six to twelve months, and he's going to be there too. He may be next year's Mister USA. Yeah. Um, he'll, and he may be doing nationals. He may get it this year too. He may shock me. He said, "I'm I'm not hating on the guy's physique at all. I just it was a conditioning thing with him." Yeah. Uh, but Joe's conditioning, and that's why I pushed him so hard. This is why I push everybody so hard because conditioning will always win over a guy who is slightly bigger, slightly fuller. And yeah. that's why I don't like to overcard people either, because when you spill them, yeah, they're fuller, they're smooth now. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I thought we brought a good balance and could have been better. Like, I think Joe probably would have been his best somewhere between 231 and maybe 234. Yeah. I think that's where his sweet spot would have been at. I, I also feel and like a lot of coaches don't have the balls to come out and say, yeah, I made an error. Like, everybody wants to act like they are the best of the best of the best, and they act like they've never made a mistake with a client before, and we all have. I don't care who you are. Like, Chad Nichols has made mistakes. Honey Rambod's made mistakes. George Ferris made mistakes. I've made mistakes. And my mistake here was actually pulling him down that extra five to seven pounds that we didn't need to do. That's why I wanted to start his cards on Monday. Okay. Yeah, I was like, "Fuck this heavyweight shit!" Like, we we just gonna get worse. <laughs> I think I think you also have to be in the white in the right mind frame to win. I I felt like Joe was confident that he had the tools to win, but he didn't take it at the foregone con conclusion that he won. Whereas yeah. I, felt like, I felt like Eric expected to win. You know, even after prejudging everything, the way he was talking on stories, it seemed like he already felt like he had to win, and. I think mindset is a big thing. You always want to be on your toes. Like, I can win, and I I, I feel like I have all the tools to win, but I'm going to go out there and battle and make sure that, you know what I'm saying? I felt like Joe was confident that he could win, but it wasn't like the show was already over. Uh, I felt like Eric is, he's very new to competing. He's only done three shows, but he's only, he's only had two seasons. So he, what he's done is, is insane already. How he looked last year, I think that was last year or the year before. Yeah, it was big, big difference. Yeah. One of my clients did the same show as him, and he wasn't that impressive. He wasn't he wasn't big. I, I mean, I didn't think he was big at all, but he was big <laughs> this year, you know. But I, I felt like because he's new to it, he felt like he was just going to come win his first USA's. And uh, well, I matter. will applaud him on his confidence. Like he's a very high energy guy, and I will applaud him on that as well. Mm -hmm. But I also think because he has such a huge following and a huge fan base. And I don't know who was in his corners. Like he had a coach from the UK. Uh, you know Callum, team pro coach. Yeah, he, he coached like the, the 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 younger, younger influencer guys mostly. But he's he's well, good. He's good. I just feel like somebody wasn't shooting it to him straight because you can't listen to your fans and your followers. We love them, but you can't take their opinion because. They are they're biased because they think so highly of you mm -hmm. that they all it's, it's like your mom, right? Your mom will always tell you that you're the best bodybuilder on the planet. Like you're Mr. Olympia in your mom and dad's eyes. Take that opinion and throw it out the window because they're biased. They love you. Your fans love you and his fans love him, too. And everybody told him. I remember reading the comment section on like between prejudge and finals and everybody, all of his fans were saying he got it. Mm -hmm. And he let that get to his head. And I think he actually believed he had it. And really, his coach should have stepped up and said, hey, look, man, you had a really good offseason. You, you did fucking amazing. You got second place at the USA's. It's nothing to be ashamed of. But today is just not your day. Mm -hmm. You know, like, 
like the guy that I went to see, I went to uh, I went to a show yesterday, and I told him I was like, "You're going to win the lightweight class and the novice." So he was a lightweight, you know, under 155. Well, the way they did the novice division, it's wide open, mm-hmm. no weight. Yeah. I said, "But you're you're going to win your open class, but you're going to lose the novice class." Mm-hmm. And I just told him, "Like you got beat by a guy 50 pounds heavier than you because I tell the truth. It may not always be what you want to hear, but I tell you the truth." Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, you, you definitely want a coach and people in your corner. That's gonna. It's only gonna make you better when they when they keep it a bug with you. Um, but let's go up to the most previous show. I want to look at the Legion because I, I have my own opinions about the Legion as well. I thought John Jewett looked freaking amazing for coming from two twelve. Yeah, he really impressed me. He did. Yeah, I, I like John. So he got this up. So who okay, so so Joe, uh who did you have the placings the way it went? Or did you have a different opinion? The well the the I did not expect John to come in as good as he was. I had him as like until I saw him um in the lineup, I thought he was gonna be fourth, like best. Uh-huh. So when he took second, I, I agreed with him once I saw it. But I mean I I agree that he should take second and Charles should have won. Charles looked really good. He has that D in his peck. Yeah. But I think just that that pop and hardness that he has, it really uh, kind of shined. And his side shots were really good, too. That side leg of his and stuff. like You know, one thing about um, Charles is, and this works to his advantage, Charles brings energy to the stage. If you, I mean, if you've ever seen him compete before, he brings an energy to the stage that makes you look at him. Like his, yeah. his his personality brings energy and his actual look itself. I thought John pushed him to the max. Not going to lie. I think that that was, I don't think that was an easy decision. I agree with the decision, but I don't think it was an easy call because I'm with you. I would have put John in the top five going into the show. Yeah, And after I see him in the first call out, I was like, now, one call that I'm going to say here, and I, and again, I like this guy too, but Justin Rodriguez, retire, buddy. Just retire, man. I like, agree. getting third place was a slap in the face to the guy who plays fourth and fifth because Justin looked like he was seven weeks out. Like, I said, I like Justin's physique. If Justin could show up in shape, He'd win every show outside the Arnold and the Olympia. Like, no one could beat him, but he can't get in shape. Just He just can't do it. He's done it once or twice, so it can be done. I, I, that's the thing is when somebody can nail it one time, that tells me you have the ability to do it. And I hate to use this word, but you're too lazy to replicate that. And I, like I said, Justin's worked with, like, ten different coaches, so it ain't the coach. It's the athlete. He, he added listen, Justin, would, Justin would have dominated that lineup if he could come down 15 more pounds. He, I think, I feel like he had his best looks with AJ. And AJ told him that he needed to take a break. And uh, I, I believe he left him because he didn't want to take a break. I think. Yeah, his, that's. Huh? It's crazy when the coaches have coaches, your friends, your family, when we have the best interest, we have your best health interest, your best mental health interest. We have your career. We have everything. We have your best intentions in our heart. And everybody tells you that and you go against it. It's like, man, what makes you think that you're be- you're smarter than everybody else? Yeah. Um, honestly, I personally had John winning, man. I thought he was. Uh, I don't want to say he, he was harder than than Charles, but from the front, like his quads, the, the way his quads separated, um, I felt like he had, he had better legs. I feel like his po- his posing was. Uh, John did win some was, poses, hands down. Certain poses he won. I, I just felt like he was more balanced. Uh, I I I personally believe muscle tears are considered or should be considered. Because it's a muscle. I mean, it's a it's a muscle contest, right? So if one of my biceps is torn up into my shoulder or one of my chest is torn in, I think it does subtract from your physique. Like the way his chest looks, it's full round separated and you have one chest. 
it's not your fault, but it's still bodybuilding. So um, me personally, so remember that there's eight poses. I yeah. think John won all the front shots personally. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think it's on the side and the back shots where he had the edge, and it's just because of that detail he has in his back. His hammies were dug out, and he just has a pop in his muscles that John's close, but I mean, I I, I think that Charles had him because of that. You yeah. know, one thing I would like to see John do is John's not exactly a spring chicken anymore. You know, he's he's got to be mid thirties. I don't know his exact age. So rather than him fucking around in the 212 division, what I would like to see John do, I think he was like 224 to 226 at the show. Am I right? Something yeah, like a, that? Yeah, yeah, he was 220, 222, I believe. Okay, so basically all he – because he just recently won a 212 pro show, right? Yeah, he's qualified. Yeah. So qualify for the Olympia, do the Olympia in 212, and he's not going to win the 212 Olympia. It's just, it's never going to happen. I believe like he called it. He, I think he's not yeah, doing he did. Yeah. He, he's not doing 212 anymore, he said. So he's not doing I was going to say, yeah. I'm happy that he's making that decision because he's at a point in his life where he's only got a few years left. I would like to see him maximize his physique just to see what he's truly capable of. The fact that he can stand there next to Charles who has been a multiple multiple time Olympian, and not only hold his own, actually beat him in multiple poses. Mm-hmm. And he didn't have an off season to do that. All he did was more or less. He just didn't have to suck down to make weight. He didn't have to lose the size and tissue to do that. So if John took a good solid year and came back to this show next year, he's winning it. Yeah. I think that was a smart decision. Uh, I was watching one of the videos, and he said that going going into the open, he doesn't necessarily care about placings. Like, obviously, he wants to play as, as good as possible, but he's not going into it to try to be Mr. Olympia. Uh, he said even if he doesn't qualify for the Olympia, he'll be more satisfied knowing that this was his best physique, bar none. But after That's, watching, huh? I agree. Yeah, but but after watching this show. I'm confident that he will qualify for the Olympia next year. Actually, he will. No, um, he'll be he'll be in the Open Olympia next year. I think he will yeah. absolutely. I think I think maybe he underestimated himself. I think we all underestimated him to a point. I didn't. I, did. I thought he would be like you said, top five. But <laughs> fighting for the title, I mean, I didn't. I didn't see that coming because you don't know how impressive somebody's going to look against the Open guys. But he looked like an Open guy. He didn't look like a two twelve guy to me. You know. Yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. Hey, do you think when uh, Sean Clarita calls it quits, they're going to get rid of the two twelve? No, I don't you think, think it should stay. Yeah. I think it should stay because you have a few outliers like Sean, Derek, and Flex Lewis. You know, obviously all three two twelve Mister Olympias that, and David Henry too, who could walk into a open pro show and win it. You know, obviously nobody. A lot of the young viewers are probably going to laugh when they Google David Henry, but if you want to Google David Henry from 2008 to 2013, try to laugh at that and see what you think because he was fucking crazy, crazy good. However, in 2010, I think David, or maybe it was 2007 or 8, he placed 10th at the Olympia at like 200 pounds. So he placed top 10 in the world at 200 pounds. That's a very big disadvantage with his body weight and his size. So you have a very select few 212 guys who can hold their own in the in the open. So I just feel like getting rid of the 212s, if you're going to get rid of 212 division, then you need to stop giving pro cards to middleweight and, and lighter because there's no point in it. Like those that guys have no chance at ever doing anything as a pro. Yeah, and I, I I think it's a I think it's an awesome division. I think you have some really good guys there. I um, do too. I like it because what I love about the two twelves when these guys have to suck down to make weight, you see some nasty ass conditioning. Yeah, yeah. Like the top guys in two twelve are always going to do well in the open, but that's okay. I mean, you could say the same thing about. I guess any division, if, if the classic guys put on another 15, 20 pounds, they would do well in the open, you know? So it's like, I still think you should be able to choose the division that you want to do. I mean, the the, the women have 
you know, 20 different divisions, you know. So yeah, I think, I, I think we can have we can have a few as well. Well, we have a few guys, you know, um, like outside of your top five Olympian 212 guys, those other guys are amazing bodybuilders. But when you're five foot two, the average five foot two bodybuilder cannot hang with a guy five ten. That's mm-hmm. 60, 70 more pounds m- more muscular than him. Yeah. So I just feel like it gives the the shorter guys, I don't want to say smaller, but the shorter guys, it gives them an opportunity to still compete and be competitive with people in their league. It's like uh, think about like again, most of y'all, most people know I'm a boxing fan. So mm-hmm. think about boxing from a like from a weight standpoint, <laughs> would it be fair to put a 160 pound boxer against a 230 pound boxer? Oh, Chances right. are that 230 pound guy is going to have him by six to 10 inches of height and probably a good foot of reach. Yeah. And he's going to get his ass handed to it. Mm-hmm. Even if the, even if the tall boxer is a shitty boxer, he's still going to beat the short guy most of the time. Because he's got that, again, structural advantage. And same with bodybuilding. You know, you have you got a few guys like primetime Mike Tyson would literally bury, kill Tyson Fury in yeah. 30 seconds. But sure. that's Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody going to fuck with Mike Tyson, not as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And Mike was like 6'1", 6'2", but Tyson Fury 6'9". Mm-hmm. But you always have that outlier. Like you have the Sean Claritas who can beat the big guy. That's very, very far and few. Yeah. yeah. But I think taking the 212 division away would be insulting to guys that is five four or five five and under. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like it mm-hmm. takes their if I was five foot five and they took the two twelve division away, I'd retire. I'd just quit. So what's the point? Even I'm gonna lose every show enter. Even a guy like Sean would would Sean have continued competing if he turned pro and had to go to the you know had to take five years to grow into the open and then start from last place would he have would he had continued competing and became what he became today he probably would have retired you know at you know uh, thirty thirty four like ah uh, I don't know if I want to continue to gain you know all this weight and still you know still not place so it took him I don't know, ten. Man. You know, I almost have to disagree with you, but because it's Sean Clarita and his mindset, mm-hmm. um, I think Sean would have continued and pushed because I keep in mind, I turned pro with Sean. We, we oh. got a pro card on the same day. Oh, shit. And yeah. I didn't meet him at the show. Like we didn't speak. We didn't talk. You know, he was a band and I was a heavy. Mm-hmm. So even when we're on stage, we're on the opposite sides of the stage together. Mm-hmm. And I didn't notice him backstage because I, I just did my own thing. I, I have my blinders. I don't care what anybody else looks like. It's all about me when I'm backstage. And I remember after the show, my mom and my friends had some good photos. And, you know, I'm looking at myself, comparing myself. And I'm obviously I'm thinking, how the hell did I just lose this overall? I'm thinking that. But putting that aside... I then go to the left of the stage. I'm like, who's the little mini Ronnie Coleman over here? Who is this guy? Like, <laughs> like he ain't as big as us, but he looks really fucking good. Really good. Like, if this guy had another six inches and 50 pounds, Lord, we wouldn't have a chance. And that's what I was thinking in my head. I remember my mom was actually impressed with him as well. And I remember the exact words came out of my mouth. I said his career started and ended at the exact time today. Like, he turned pro, and now he'll never do jack shit as a pro. He's done. Over. And I am glad that Sean proved me wrong because I like Sean as a person, and I like Sean as an athlete now. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that he took my words and smashed my words. I just think Sean is a very highly determined person. And the more more we doubt him, the more driven he's going to be. Yeah. 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 Again, not many people have that mindset, though, like what he's got. Facts. No facts. All right, we we've been on like over an hour now. Uh, Paul looks like he's about to pass out, but <laughs> I've been watching him. I'm like, oh, he's falling over. I'm just kind of like, I, I, I was kind of waiting for him to just fall over and then be like, yeah. I saw you, I saw that. No, but but let, let's do. Uh, is it too soon to do Olympia predictions? Uh, we, got, we got like. I've already put my top five out there in the other podcast. Oh, we we did. Okay, 
Let's start with Paul then. I, I got to write it down because if I don't write it down, it's going to be like, we're going to forget this shit. Hold up. Uh, let me write it down. Predictions. All right. Let's start with Paul. But Paul is limited on time right now. Let's just start. <laughs> I think, uh, what's all we say? Uh, the Lungford one, <laughs> body two, Samson yeah. three. Uh, fuck. Losses there. Nick. Man. You got Nick, Brandon. Um, Brandon four, and, probably. Nick, Nick five. So I Brandon. Like Brandon. That was mine, except I flipped. Nick and Brandon. You you um you guys feel like Andrew's gonna uh, Andrew be Hunter and I guess Hunter was well I guess we don't have we don't have Rami Rami that he thought he's not gonna be fifth because he's gonna be out so that'll be Rami's not doing it this year no he's not he's oh not. yeah he, oh. you you guys think uh what you think about Andrew you think Andrew's gonna break the top five or no, yeah. I absolutely do. I could, I could see him doing it. Let's go. So uh, I think it's, I think it's possible. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think so too. So let's go, Joe. Next, just so I can write it down. What you got? What you got, Joe? Uh, Derek, Audie, Samson, Nick, and Brandon. Derek, Hardy, Sam, Nick. Also, oh, okay, like you say, the same thing. Just reverse. swap the last two. Wait, Samson, Nick, and then uh, Brandon. Yeah. All right, man. And then what you what you got for it, uh, Justin? Um, my top four is going to be set in stone. Number five, I'm, I might flip flop this, but for now, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with Joe and Paul both. I got to say, Derek is going to go number one. I just because I've seen his videos and he looks like to have fixed the chest. Because that was his only real critique. Mm -hmm. um, he's just much prettier to look at than Hottie. Absolutely. So yeah. I'm going Derek, Hottie, and then I'm going to go Samson, and then I'm throwing Andrew in fourth. Oh. I'm good. throwing Andrew in fourth. Like, I used to rip on Andrew Arcos. because he couldn't get in shape. Mm -hmm. But he seems to have figured that out now. Yeah. Um, fifth place, I think, is going to be – a toss up between Hunter Labrada and Nick Walker. Oh, okay. That, that's, a, that's a good one. I, I can see yeah. that. I can see that too. I mean, Hunter looks so good right now, too, man. Man, I, looks got even better since his last show. And his uh, updates. I thought, I thought he was going to be one of those guys that are, is going to have a you know hard time getting in shape for like his whole career. But man, that guy was shredded, man. That guy was in shape, he was in real shape. You know, so I, I'm going to say there is the odd odd ball here that could change. I, I'm still staying strong in my predictions, but we really haven't emphasized Samson as much. Mm -hmm. I think if Samson can bring a true Olympia level conditioning, mm -hmm. Samson will take it. A hundred percent, but that's why I'm waiting yeah, yeah. for it. it it's just because. The reason why we don't have from winning because it, there's that if, whereas we know Derek is going to be shredded and much improved. But yeah. Samson, we're still wondering, is he going to be I think he will be in better shape than the Arnold, but is he going to be on par with like Derek's condition? If he is, then he's going to he's gonna win the whole thing. Yeah. You're not going to be. Here's the thing. Huh? Hear me out on this just for a second. Let's look back at the 2019 Mr. Olympia. Brandon had the be Brandon has the best structure that we've seen in a long time. Yeah, like I said back in 2008 when he won the USA's, I was like, this guy has everything. Um, just took him 10 years to fulfill that, but he finally got it. Brandon was not the most shredded guy on stage. He no. never has been. No. There was multiple guys that outconditioned Brandon at the 2019 Mr. Olympia. Multiple guys. That's why I think if Samson can just bring 95%, the fact that he is so much, again, this goes back to a large frame versus a small frame. Derek's a 212 guy. You know, he's not a big boy. Uh, Samson is a very, very large individual. 
Yeah. And he's got structure to go with it, along with muscle mass. So I think if Samson can come close, he doesn't have to match Derek. Yeah. We know Derek and Hottie's going to be the two hardest guys on stage. For sure. I don't think anyone can really fight us on that. Yeah. But if Samson can come 95% to that conditioning, I realistically think he could win it. I don't have him winning it because we've not seen it yet, but I think it, it's in the real it's in the realm and it's realistic to think that this could happen. And I also think Andrew could move as high as second or third if he continues to improve at the rate that he's improving at. Yeah. You know, with Andrew, he's he's a little older, but he doesn't have a lot of miles on his body because he ain't like he's been competing since he's 20. He's only been competing a couple of years. Yeah. So, yeah, he's like 40 or so, but like it, he's very young to the sport, which is why he's still improving. Yeah. And again, Andrew is streamlined. When he's in shape, well, when he's out of shape, he's streamlined. But I don't care if he's out of shape. It doesn't mean anything to him. But when he's in shape and he's streamlined, but the beautiful thing about Andrew's physique, I became a fan of him, if you can't tell. Uh, I used to be the opposite. I used to kind of hate on him a little bit, but I became a fan. But his physique is so big, he could add 40 more pounds of muscle and still not be tapped out, which is nuts. 100%. Yeah, 100%. He don't even have to do that. He's, I think he's going to be top five this year just as he is. Yeah. yeah. With, with Andrew, it's the opposite of Samson. Andrew actually needs to keep his fullness while being shredded, whereas Samson could forget about fullness. He so could lose a little bit and still still be there. Exactly. I, I, I don't know too much about Milos. Mm -hmm. I I haven't really heard him being like big. Like I, I don't know many of his guys that come in peeled. I know he's really good at building them up, but mm -hmm. I've never heard much about bringing them down. Like they always look good, but they're never like that kind of conditioning you're you're, you're looking at. Unless so, unless they're already genetically like uh Beirut's. I think Beirut came out the womb shredded, so he just. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. this motherfucker, like, but like the Samsons, the Regans, like yeah. Samson looks better than Regan, but I think Samson has better genetics. Yeah, but I, I just like I'm wondering if it's Milos's like tactics bringing them down that's kind of holding that conditioning back a little bit. No disrespect to him, but I just never well, keep in mind. There's one thing I want to point out that we mentioned earlier on that subject. Regans had multiple coaches. And he's never nailed it. Oh, so, okay. I unfortunately, I, I, I have to point fingers at Reggie, not the coaches. Yeah. I think uh, Samson has been with Milos for a little while, right? Yeah. yeah. And they've continued to get better and better and better. They've like they've um, perfected the peak a little bit better each show. And I don't know what they're doing. I ain't got a clue what they're doing. But... If he continues to perfect that and he continues to improve on that, and I hope that they do, but Samson seems to be able to listen. And yeah. I'm not saying Reagan don't listen, but I kind of am saying I don't think Reagan listens 100% just because he's went through so many coaches. Milos actually spoke. He speaks on that on the uh, – I don't know if you guys watch the IFBB uh, AMA, AMA channel. Yeah, Milos speaks about that. He, You know Milos. He's a straight shooter. Whether you're his friend, brother, cousin, he's gonna be honest. He's not gonna. I thought me and him like each other. <laughs> you see, so he was he was straight up. He's like, yeah, he would tell me. Uh, he would tell Regan, hey, do another round of posing. Send me the video so I know. And he would be like, when I don't get the video, I know he didn't do it. So I know he did, he he wasn't doing it. You know, same thing with the. Uh, he told him about the shaving. Regan shaved the day uh, the day of the show. He was like, why would you do that? Shave a week before. So there's a, a lot of things that he told him to do. Uh -huh. He didn't necessarily follow. So, you know, he's watching him, you know, have the protein pancakes or whatever the case he has. And he's thinking, I didn't tell him to do that. So uh, he, he's not following 100 percent. Yeah, th th that's that's definitely. For I mean, um, even the shaving thing, man, you know, it's a, it's a thing a lot of people don't take into consideration, but it does slightly. I mean, it's just slight, but it will create a little bit of inflammation under the skin. Sure. Like it's, you know, and then you got razor burn on top of that. And, you know, I had this conversation with a guy, and I'm not going to name drop him this time, um, because I think that if me and him work together, we'll I'll have a good pro under my belt. But the tan, me and Paul talked about the tan. The tan, when you put that tan on, it's paint, basically. It's body paint. Mm. So if you walk into the show, pasty-ass white, 
that just means they have to put even more tan on you. And it does kind of distort the lines a little bit. Mm. Like I can say this two days out. I always look better two days out. And it wasn't a peaking thing. It was literally a, a tan. Yeah. Like if I could go back and redo myself, I would have taken Milano tan and I would have tanned in the tanning bed every day for the last six weeks. That way, when they spray me, it's a, you're done, Justin. You're, you're good. Yeah. Get a thin coat on. But yeah, the tanning process. And I'll have to say this about Milos. If Milos gave me peak week tips, I'm taking them. The reason why is the guy did like 75 shows. <laughs> he has to know some stuff that the average person don't know. When it comes to, again, tanning, shaving, you know, those little tiny details that most people don't think is important, it ain't important that, you know, the, the Mr. Whatever state. But it is important at pro shows when you're competing with the best of the best. Yeah. 100%. You know, 1% one, 1 difference can take you from first to fifth real quick. Yeah, yeah, I'm 100%. Yeah, so... um. I give my my Olympia pricks. I got Derek. I thought we all got Derek winning, which is which says a lot about what Derek has done. But I got Samson second. Um, I think even if he's not a hundred percent, I think he'll be good enough to be just bringing what he bought at the Arnold's just a, a a little bit tighter or a little bit bigger, either or. Um, not that he needs to get bigger, but I think that's going to be good enough to 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 be Heidi, you know. Uh, but then he, Heidi gets so peeled that if you're not shredded, you're gonna you're gonna stick out. But uh, I'll still put Samson second. I got Heidi third. I got Nick fourth. Uh, I think Nick Nick's size is overwhelming with his uh, condition. I think that's what's gonna put him over Andrew. But once again, there's a lot of ifs. If Andrew is full enough, he'll he'll beat Nick. He'll beat Nick if he's full enough. But I just don't know if he's gonna be able to be that shredded and full. So. That rounds up. I wish I, I, I had Curry here because I, well, I love Curry's physique. But I got to be let honest. Let me ask you this on your prediction. I just want to see your opinion on this. Uh -huh. When you said that Nick is going to beat Andrew. So Nick beat Andrew at the Arnold. Uh -huh. But keep in mind, look what Andrew looked like at the Arnold versus what Andrew looked like at the Texas Pro. That yeah. was a different bodybuilder, man. And he did that in like six months with no offseason. So I think if Andrew can replicate that Texas pro look, he's going to get Nick. Now, now to defend Nick, and I don't like Nick one bit, but to defend Nick, mm -hmm. Nick was stringy at the Arnold. Yeah. If Nick brings back that fullness, that might change things. Yeah, I, I was just watching. I forgot what podcast it was. I was watching the podcast, and they were showing Nick at the Arnold. I didn't realize that his legs did flatten out. At the time watching it, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But watching it now, yeah, his, his legs definitely did flatten out. Um, if he's full and hard like he was at the old, but he said he he's uh, gonna be quite a bit heavier. Um, doesn't look like his waist got wider, so I think he, he should have what it takes to be Andrew. But listen, if, if Andrew improved more than he did, Andrew could be Andrew could be anybody. Honestly, yeah. Andrew can beat everybody. You know, it's just he that could also be the wild card that wins the Mister Olympia. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, he literally he literally can beat everybody. He has the potential to beat everybody. It's just that there's 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 quite a few ifs, you know. So it's almost like you're judging the top by by the least ifs. Derek has the least ifs. He will be shredded. He will be improved. You know. Then he he has the best back. So these are all he has them. There's not there's no ifs. You know. If you're going by only ifs, Hadi would be second then because Hadi has the least ifs too. We know he's gonna be shredded. We know he's gonna be wide. You know he's gonna. So you're judging the show on ifs, the least amount of ifs. I think Samson and Andrew have quite a few ifs. Uh, Nick really doesn't have many ifs. He's not going to – I doubt he's going to come in flat. So um, he just doesn't – structurally just can't stand next to those guys. So it's hard to judge, man. I mean, this shit is this shit is packed. And Brandon Curry is great. But once again, there's a lot of ifs. Is he going to come in – too Brandon's fun. also Ooh. getting a lot of miles on him too, man. Because exactly. keep in mind, Brandon um he turned pro in 2008, mm -hmm. but I think he won the collegiate nationals in like 2003 or four. So Brandon's been at this for like 20 years. Yeah. And I just feel like the improvement 
time for Brandon has probably came and gone. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, Brandon don't need a whole lot more than just to be harder. But we've never seen we even like I said, even when he won the Mr. Olympia, we've never seen a truly peel Brandon ever. I feel like that's purposely done. I feel like they're they're scared he's gonna lose his legs. You remember that year when he had he was rocking the the baldy? He was like a lot lighter. And his legs did look smaller, but he 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 beat Phil at that year, so they like to look, you know. Uh, he he just may lose his legs if he comes in too too peeled. So I, I think they they have to play a game with him. But it, it's just these guys have too many tools, man. Because you have a Samson because of his age, I don't see him adding a lot of size to his legs. No, no, I, I just I just can't see it. That's it. You guys got time to answer a few questions that I got from my Instagram? Yeah, I'm good. You good? Uh, how you hanging in there, Paul? I'm good. I'm better now. <laughs> got a second win. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got. Uh, in your, uh, I should re I should read this in my head before I read it out loud, but just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we actually just talked about this. In your opinion, is a deload week important? Also, in and out or Shake Shack? <laughs> that's from Jehovah Jehovah Liftness. So that's a good name, Jehovah Liftness. I, I, I've never done a deload week. I just go by feel. There's some days I feel strong as an ox and I'll lift like I am, and then there's other days where <laughs> I, it's just it's not firing right, and I'll just I'll train hard, but it's with a different kind of intensity. You hold back, okay. In and out. <laughs> in and out. <laughs> How about you, Paul? I've, I've never done a deal all week, ever, ever. I just keep keep grinding. I I've think never done a deload week. Mm -hmm. Kind of like with me is if I can feel mentally, you're not going to break me. Yeah. You will never break me mentally in the gym. However, my joints sometimes start to ache a little bit. So when that happens, I don't do a deload per se. I will go in and kind of almost do my workouts backwards because I usually start with heavy compounds and I finish more isolation. So let, let's just say chest. I'll go in and I'll do pec deck because that ain't ta – this elbow's – dude, this elbow's been a problem since I was 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And when it flares up, it flares up. So I'll go in and I will pre-exhaust my pecs with this, but I'll purposely wait like 75 to 90 seconds between sets and I'm just going to pump as much blood. And I'll still take those sets to failure, 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll also do a little higher rep range, you know, like 12 to 15. So I'm using lighter weight, and I'm just pumping that muscle, plump full of blood, and just trying to kill it from a different angle. So it's not really a deload. It's just a completely different training style. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I, I think, yeah, I think we don't like that term because we never go into the gym like, this is deload week for the next two weeks. We don't, we literally, if we go to the gym, we warm up and I'm like, yo, my elbows hurt today. You know what? I'm not going to do the incline barbell today. I'm going to go ahead and do yeah. that. You know? you know? And then like you said, uh, you know, three plates with her, my elbow. So let me just squeeze and get more reps. But we're not going into the gym with the idea of not training, you know, intensely. We're just kind of like, we're, we'll work around it. But that goes, it doesn't have to be a certain week for it. If my legs feel great, I might train legs all the way 100%, but if my elbow hurts, I might not be able to train them. So I'm not like going to just deload my entire body for like a No, second. I agree with you 100% on that. Yeah, we literally just work around whatever we can do. And that's that's literally bodybuilding, right? You always you have know, to you know, be smart. Listen to your body, you know? You know, at all times of the year, not only during deload week, yeah. you should be listening to your body all year long, <clears> as far as I'm concerned. And also, uh, Paul, did you say In and Out or Shake Shack? In and Out. Update. I don't, I don't like Shake Shack like that. It's kind of I'm not a fan. It's kind of oily too. I'm yeah, like, that's more. I'm gonna tell you, overly salty. Yeah, overly salty yeah. one. Right. Now, if you said if you said In and Out or uh, Five Guys, then we got a conversation going. But I still think Five Guys is too oily. In and Out. I still go In and Out. I'm from the East Coast though, so you know Five Guys got a special part. Yeah. In my heart. How about you, Justin? <laughs> well. I live on the East Coast, and all we have here is five guys. We don't have in and out We don't have Shake Shack. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to elaborate on that, and I'm going to choose neither. Ooh. Like, if I don't have – Okay, here's the thing. Justin wants McDonald's. 
<laughs> this is me. I grew up on McDonald's and cheap ass burgers, so I'm over that. If mm. I have the option, if I go down a strip that has restaurants on it, fast <laughs> food or restaurants, I'm going to get a quality meal. Like, like it may cost me a little bit more money, and that's fine, but I want to sit down and have a quality meal. Mm. Now, let's say there's not a restaurant. Like there's no Longhorn, no steakhouses, no nothing like that, and I have to choose fast food. Uh -oh. I'm probably going to do a Subway or a Wendy's. Wow. Not Shake Shack or in and out in and out was good when I tried it, but like I didn't even try in and out until 2015. It was my first time ever having it because, again, I'm an East Coast guy. We don't have it. And I saw all this hype about it. And I used to see Jay Cutler and stuff, and I'm like, oh, it's got to be good. I was horribly disappointed. It was a plain ass burger to me. Well, you're going based on Jay Cutler. That motherfucker ate cardboard and was fine with it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, In and Out is good. Like maybe after a show, when you're hungry as hell, everything I, tastes good after a show. Yeah, yeah, exactly my point. But I gotta be honest. It's like I'm not a I'm not a big fan of In and Out. Like my girl loves it, but she diets all year. Like she's always dieting. So yeah, she's gonna love it, but. When, you know, when I'm like eating like a good baseline diet, I don't really, I, I don't, honestly, I don't even crave burgers at all at, at, at this time, you know, but. I do, but it's got to be quality, man. I can't, I can't do cheap fast food stuff. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel you on that one. Like if I'm on the road and that's my only option, it's like, hey, man, I, throw me that jug of protein and give me a fucking apple and banana. I'm good. You get to go. <laughs> like I just, I'd rather not spend the 15 bucks on something that. One is not good for me. Two, I'm not even going to truly enjoy it. I like I like fat styles a lot. Fat styles is pretty good. That's a sandwich place, right? Yeah, they, they have burgers too that are good, but the sandwiches are, are really good. I, I uh, like Eric, that. when he would do his crazy cheat days, when uh, back when he was when he actually competed, yeah, yeah, your uh, Kineski, he well, always got fat styles. Man, oh, man, that place was good as hell. Eric, I'll tell you about, about Eric didn't have the genetics to be a good pro, but he was insane. He he would do what it takes, like almost to the point that I I, I was scared for him. I, I was scared for his life. I'm like, this guy's guys, this guy's guy too quick. He would throw up the comedian guy. Yeah, Konevsky, yeah. <laughs> we need to bring his ass out to where I'm at, start getting the all those Walmart <laughs> shopping carts. <laughs> I've ripped a few people's ass. I think I've scared people in the parking lot before. You, you know, I'll say something, but I ain't playing when I'm saying it. I, it ain't no YouTube video when I say it. <laughs> he's my he's my neighbor, actually. Believe it or not, oh, Eric, Eric's my neighbor. So we we've been good friends since I, since I moved out moved out here. That's when he was like bodybuilding heavy, you know. And he would, man, I've seen him eat ten thousand calories, no problem. I've seen him throw up mid set, and he doesn't give a fuck. He'll throw up and just wipe it up, and it's like holy <laughs> shit. Like he he he's insane. He's insane, you know, but. Now he has that same energy throw it towards YouTube and he makes a full time living. It's like you, you have to be you have to be a little crazy for your goals to, to really make it, you know. So but genetically I'll give him credit. I don't watch many YouTubers, but I like most of his videos. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he he's nothing like that in real life though. He that, that's not obviously like, you know, it's a character, right? So he, yeah. he he's just a chill guy. He's a chill guy. He's kinda of shy. Well, I can tell he seems like a guy I'd want to hang out with. Yeah, no, he he's he's super cool. He's super cool. You say he's kind of shy. He's actually kind of shy. Yeah, he's actually what the fuck? like like early on. Yes, I had to help him with his fans because like his fans would run up to him like, hey, you know, because fans think like that's how he is, so they're being silly and shit. And he's well, like, cool, <laughs> yeah, and he's like, and I'm like, oh, what's up, bro? Yeah, you know, what I'm saying, and I kind of break the ice, and then he'll be like, yeah, he'll get cool, but they'll want you know, you know, they'll run up to him doing stupid shit. And he's like, I I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that silly. And we're like, you know, that's not. <laughs> let, me my, let me put my tattoos on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, he walks into the gym sometimes, and he still has the tattoos on, and people don't want to go near him because imagine being that big and. They call. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's why people are scared of you, bro. Well, think about Martin Ford. You know Martin, right? Oh, holy shit! Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's got the tattoos on his face, and he's like the largest man I've ever seen in real life. That's that's wild. Yeah, yeah. Like Martin's actually got a wild personality, man. You can't not like Martin. Yeah, no, he he he, he seems pretty cool. I've only met him once, but he he seemed, he seemed really cool when I when I met him. But he has that hardcore accent too. 
Yeah, that, that, yeah. that's the sound. Dude, you're like, man, this guy's killed people. Bro, <laughs> Im- imagine yeah, him being like a trainer a real partner. gangster. No, he, yeah. he, he, he comes yeah. up that way. Him being your training partner, that, that got to be fun. That got to be fun. All right, let's see. I one. bet I, I would love to be a fly on the wall when him and Eddie Hall was training together. <laughs> oh my god, Eddie like Hall, the, I, the I comedy that him. goes involved with those two would just—I'd yeah, yeah. probably die of like suffocation from trying to laugh too hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would love to train with Eddie Hall, man. It, it, it's funny because he he's super lighthearted, but. He was a hoodlum too back in his days, but he he he's super like funny, lighthearted. You know, that's how it goes. You can tell his little shit based on how he like messes around with his son. Yeah, that's yeah. That motherfucker was fucking around too much when he was a kid. I know for a fact. <laughs> he definitely was. All right, let's let's do one more question. Cause I'm starting to go hypo. You know how that goes. Paul Paul's been hypo since the minute we started. Yeah, he's been, he been hypo. <laughs> that's because I ate right before. That's because I ate right before we got on. <laughs> All right, this is from <laughs> Hayden Myers. This kid actually has crazy potential. Hayden Myers, he's he's like his structure is wild. He just needs a little bit more muscle and condition, but he's gonna do really well. I know he is. Um, what's your first experience with GH? If my hands if hurt and, and got <laughs> <laughs> bro, even on like two, I use my hands like fucking hurt, bro. My like fucking right hand. Bro. Oh, fuck. Like these three fingers. Yeah. But when people ask questions like that, I almost don't know what to say. Like, it was good. Like, it wasn't like, I don't know. I I didn't notice much. It was like, I felt I'm kind of messed good. up with the head. Like, if I don't feel this, I'm like, I don't got good shit. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but what was your first experience with GH? Uh, what effects did you get during it? Let's start with, let's start with Paul. Yeah. Uh. First experience with GH. I, I feel like we don't we don't think about that kind of shit. I feel like we I don't just, like I don't I don't think I really truly felt it. That's it. But I mean, as far as the hands hurting and oh yeah, that shit, that shit. In the middle of the night, three in the morning, waking up and having to fucking you know do this to your hands, like oh you can get the feeling back into it. Yeah. But um, I mean, as far as physically, like I don't honestly, I don't think I really felt anything. I, I got to be honest, like I I don't think about <clears throat> drugs that way. Like I don't take it and anticipate something. I just follow like the program, and then, of course, you get the results. But do you really know where the results are coming from? Like, yeah. you're gaining size because you're eating more, <laughs> and you're training hard. Like, I mean, I, I guess like if you take an Anadrol, maybe you'll get stronger. But you kind of would get stronger anyways. You know, I don't, I don't know. In my head, when I took GH the first time, what I noticed, a hundred percent, was my my hands getting swollen. Yeah, and, um, I will say I was a size ten and a half. In 2018, I want to say, and now I'm a size 13. So, <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> yeah, and I, <laughs> Damn. I haven't got any taller, so uh, I would have to say, I don't think that happens to everybody, but you know, but I know a friend that went two shoe sizes as well you in see? about three years. Yeah, so I, that's the thing, that's the thing. I'm not pushing GH right now, so my hands look kind of normal. But my hands can get pretty uh I get a little funky looking. It gets like I get the this shit, like muscles popping out and shit all over. Um, that's really what I noticed. Um I think I feel like my cap has been lifted. Cause I remember I was a heavyweight when I first tried it and I became a super, but I would have became a super regardless. But I felt like as long as I'm willing to eat enough food, I will continue to grow. Whereas without the GH, with just the anabolics, I don't know if it, if it was that linear. I think there was kind of a wall where my stage weight wasn't going up as gradually. You know, um, maybe some fullness, definitely from some fullness. I don't feel like I stay leaner on GH. Uh, I, I'm not one of those guys who stays lean, so I wouldn't know. So if I'm being honest, yeah, fullness, maybe the, the cap is lifted, like, I can continue to grow maybe a little more and numb ass hands, big feet. That's about it. <laughs> uh, how about Joe? Yeah, no, just uh, my hands just take a beating. And then also my, it's almost like. Yeah. I feel like, like, like my wrist joints real bad. Carpal tunnel. It's it's only like carpal like, tunnel. Yeah. It, it'll only happen 
when I go to a new like level of it. So like once I get used to it, I'm cool. It's like I'm normal. I don't even feel the numbness really. But once I up the ante just a tiny bit, my body's like, what the hell? And I go through all of it all over again. So it's or even even if you're on the same dose, but you hit like a new weight on the GH. Then I then I start the same thing like I go to yeah no that happens too yeah yeah on chest if I go to bench or something incline bench kind of like my wrists and hands I'm like I, I don't know it feels off you know even when I go to deadlifts my hand can get so swollen that I can't even grip the bar pop properly that, you know that arm day we did at Madhouse when you yeah. were there with us Justin my right here like we saw a single arm pushdowns my wrist hurts so damn bad <laughs> it took a while for it to kind of like dissipate. <laughs> like it took yeah, me a yeah. lot of warm ups to make it go away. So, so basically, GH, you just feel side effects and, and no, no, no gains. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Nah>. maybe <laughs> it, it is more long term, man. It's not. It, yeah, it's, that's why it's like it's not like your first cycle where you add twenty pounds of muscle. It's, it's like a gradual thing. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to explain. I mean, fullness. Hands, you know. Not, not only that, I mean, when you're on GH, I mean, how much more shit are you on too? You know what I mean? So how yeah. you get how you get distinguish <laughs> what's doing what? Like, you know, it's bro. It's, uh, when people uh, when people are like, yo, what do you feel on Winnie? Do your joints get hurt? And I'm like, bro, I, I don't know what the fuck I feel because I'm I'm probably on trend and you know master on it. Who knows? I don't know. I'm just I'm just dieting, bro. I'm just trying to get. In hey, shape. I don't even feel oh. emotions anymore. All I know is that look, the brain is working, so. You know, or, or do you get anxiety on EQ? I'm like, I got to be honest. Sometimes I'm anxious. Sometimes I'm not. I don't know when the fuck what's going you on. You don't know what's from. <laughs> yeah, I'm just sometimes I'm mad. I'm, we just have emotions. I, I can't tell you what the fuck I feel. You know, you feel depressive <laughs> one day. You feel happy one day. It, it is what it is. Like, I don't even I don't even think about it. I don't do yeah, it. Yeah, so I just ask them, like, don't you feel all that shit when you're not on anything? <laughs> exactly. Right now, right? Yeah, okay, right now I'm on TRT, right? You know, health, the health phase, right? And honestly, I'm still feeling everything that I would feel, you know, I'm feeling. I'll be honest. I sleep better. I feel really good. But I'm okay. also not pushing the food and stuff anymore either. I'm definitely so. sleeping better. But, like, mood-wise, I, I feel like temperament, I feel... I, I think I think the only thing mood wise that I've ever really experienced what it was coming from was is Halo. So oh, yeah. once you get on Halo, you're just really short fused, and you know what I mean, like you have less patience <laughs> for shit. That 100 percent is the only thing I can call out that I do feel. I do feel, bro. By two weeks out, I'm not a human being, bro. I'm sleeping on the floor. I don't, <laughs> in I, the I gym. Don't, <laughs> yeah, the I don't. Mattress is right next to him. <laughs> yeah, bro. You know, with GH with me, I had a little bit of a different side effects um uh -oh. i grew but it was also one of those situations where i was consistently growing on stage anyways mm. but um the first time i ever used it you know the guys that was in my corner said oh you can use six to seven units a day I said, okay <laughs> well the thing is i was using this and i'm gonna throw them under the bus they don't exist anymore but it was called elitropin e-l-i tropin and they were green tops. Never heard fake, of that. Fake. One hundred percent counterfeit. Oh, that's so. Weird. I was using, you know, six. I was using six to seven a day, and I remember at the time, you know, I'm still very good friends with this guy, and he goes, "Dude," he's like, "How can you even write your name?" Because I was a loan officer at the time. He goes, "How can you even write with your hands?" It's like, Dude, my hands are fine. I was like, "I have no problems at all." He goes, "Well, you're the anomaly." Okay, so I thought, I'll do ten. I did 10. Felt nothing. Well, then I switched. I don't know if this, these probably, you got, I've been bodybuilding, I've been around a little bit longer than you guys have. But do you remember International Pharmaceutical? We went by IP. IP? Yeah, I remember that one. Remember the yellow tops? Yeah. Okay, so I switched from those green tops to the yellow tops. And I thought, oh, well, you know, I'm using 10 IU of green tops. I'm going to use 10 IU of yellow tops. Oh, so I went straight to 10 IU of real growth hormone. Holy shit. You know what I'm talking about? Your hands hurting? I was hurting all the way up into my forearm and my elbows. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I, I remember telling my friend, he goes, dude, that's what you're supposed to feel. And I'm like, <laughs> I took it back to three. And I had <laughs> so many side effects at three. I like, I didn't, you know, you said you couldn't only really grip the bar. <laughs> Yeah, I remember doing curls with twenty five pound dumbbells, and I couldn't hardly hold on to the weight. Um, but I also know 
that whenever I took GH, um, I didn't get any feet size. Talking about the hand muscles, my mm -hmm. close friend he he used to call me Gorilla Mitts because my fucking hands were so big. Okay. My hands were like my hands looked like they. Be I mean, I still have like average fingers, but the thickness of like my palm, the thickness of my fingers, yeah. like I looked like they, they belonged to a guy that was six five, four hundred pounds. <laughs> like that's what my hands looked like. I looked like a giant obese fat man. So I had that going on, but I also noticed a few other side effects. I noticed my fingernails. I'm clipping my nails twice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I do, I do I'm shaving. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm getting extra body hair. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. You know? And then here's the big one. This is a kicker. I used to get incredibly angry when I was younger, when people would post these pictures. From the time I was a teenager to the time I was an adult, and people be like, yeah, look at what the growth hormone did to his face. And I'm like, dude, my face is fine. I was like, shut the fuck up. Like, I get so <laughs> angry that, like, I wanted to come through the phone and kill my followers. I was like, I will literally cut your throat and shit down your neck right now. <laughs> like, I hate you. Like, you guys are just, I'm, I'm going to call a bunch of haters. But looking back on it now, they were right. <laughs> <laughs> because they were 100% right. And I don't hate, I, I'm not angry at them. They were just speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. But like, I look at my facial features from the time I was about 20 to 21 to 22. There was no growth involved at 21, mm -hmm. 22 years old. And then I started noticing, again, from that 22 to 24, 25, people started making comments. And I again, I used to just get bitter and angry about it, but they were just making, you know, observations that were factual observations. My nose got bigger. My lips got bigger. Mm. My fucking cranium. I, I went up in hat size. I got a bigger noggin. I got a big old bobble I head. Also my head's growing too. <laughs> yeah. And, <you> <laughs> um, that was my thing because it, it did change my jawline, like, I don't know, I, I didn't measure my jaw, obviously, but if you could have put, like, a, a tape measure from here to here, it got wider. I didn't get fatter. My actual bone growth, like you said, yeah. your feet grew, like, two or three sizes. Yeah. My head grew. I mean, <laughs> it sucks that the one body part we all like to grow don't fucking grow, but, yeah. you know, that kind of sucks. Well, that, but that gets I was smaller if everything gets bigger. Maybe I'll get <laughs> <laughs> and if you're lucky, and I'll break into a different industry. Yeah. Um, I mean, man, man. Ball. Yo, dog, I don't think this is worth it. <laughs> yeah. Man, man, I'm honestly, all these side effects and everything staying the same. What the fuck? Hey, what's going on? Hey, hey uh, Hayden, uh, when Hayden sees this, Hayden might not want to take GH after this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Nothing but negatives. <laughs> but, but to be honest, man, when you mention it, if you look at most bodybuilders, like in their early 20s, to like the thirties, bro. Their head, man. Their head changes, man. I look at my old pictures, and I'm like, me and my girl had like the same size head, and then now my girl's head is like this compared to mine. And I'm like, holy fuck, is it the beard? And I'm like, are you, you're trying to make excuses, right? You're like, maybe it's because I just gained because I, I gained more muscle. I, I like, made excuses for myself. That's exactly yeah. right. I'm like, I maybe told I'm Paul recently that I took a picture because <laughs> I got a haircut and want to kind of see what my beard looked like. I see the back of my head. Like, Paul, I got a fat fucking head. Why'd you tell me so? <laughs> like, what the fuck did this happen? He's talking about the, the rolls in the back of his yeah, head. Yeah, you, you are too fucking 80, bro. The fat's got to go somewhere. <laughs> bro, like, how the listen, hell a fat guy? When, in, off, in off season, I always grow my beard out and I let my hair down because I want to cover my face fat and my damn neck rolls, bro. <laughs> oh, always, bro. <laughs> when I was at my peak and I would take my head and throw it back, I used to say I had a ballpark Frank in the back of my head. <laughs> oh, a big fat roll in the back of my... I could have abs and have a fat roll in the back of my head. I'm like, what the fuck? This makes no yes. sense. I can fucking see it in the mirror next to me. <laughs> bro, bro uh, we, we actually had, we had Jordan Hutchinson on a couple yeah. weeks ago, I want to say, right? He posted a before and he posted a picture of 2017 versus now, bro. I said, "There's no way that's you, but there's no. Way. It's not even the. It's not the same person. His head was like this small, bro. Like he had like a really like a bean head, but his head is like he's, like, he's a different person. It, it doesn't even look like the same person. His eyes are bigger. His nose a bit. I think it affects some people worse than others. 
Yeah, 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 absolutely. Wait. That dude, uh, Josh Manley, looks completely different when he when he first started. Oh, you, you can't recognize some people. You you, you, you literally can't. You know, I Josh mean, when he shaves is a, like <laughs> so. When Josh has a beard, you know, Josh is like twenty out of thirty, right? I don't know. About yeah, that. yeah. I found I that really. out when I met him. Like Josh looks much older than twenty out of thirty. When he shaves, he looks like he's about twenty two. <laughs> No so shit. the beard no, is a big roll on Josh. It is, yeah, yeah. It is. Everybody, everybody thinks I'm like in my late thirties. I think I think it's the beard, but like when you shave, you look like a like a baby usually, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah, but even when yeah. I, I was I was watching Phil Heath's first video, um, I forgot what it's called. The, the you, you know I'm that first video when he's doing the the deadlifts and shit. You know, he was like he looked like he was about sixteen, man. But yeah. yeah. You know, even his facial feature, like Justin oh. said, his nose was smaller, his lips were smaller, his fucking eye, uh, his eyebrows were smaller, everything smaller, not just like his muscles. He looks like a baby. His voice is like, yeah, guys, just feel the gift to you. And you're like, what the fuck? It's like, it's like a different person. Then five years later. I don't think the GH affects our voice as much, but I will no. say this. My voice has gotten deeper. Mm. Since using anabolics, and I think it's it's like when a woman takes uh, steroids, mm. you know, they develop like masculine features. Their voice changes, gets more raspy. Sure. I think as bodybuilders, not everybody's affected. If you look at Jay Cutler, I mean, Jay doesn't really have a deep voice, in my opinion. No, no. And we ain't gonna sit here and say that Jay didn't use he didn't use TRT in his prime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. That being said. My voice has definitely gotten deeper, but I think that's probably just due to testosterone. Yeah, yeah. And in, and in age, to, to a certain, even like natural people, age. as they get older, you know, when you when you hit like your 40s, you get a, another tone down. In 50s, you know, like when, when you talk to Robbie Robinson, it sounds like you're talking to the damn, you know, Darth Vader, you know, because <laughs> I think he, he used anabolics and he's also like almost 80, you know. Yeah. But his voice is so deep. It's almost like he sounds like he can barely talk, right? So, so it's like you know, I think age in itself, but then you add in anabolics, and it's like a whole different level, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yep. uh, Ronnie Coleman wasn't effective for some reason, but most people, most people. Like well, that. if you look at Ronnie's face, though, remember back at the Olympias, like in the the nineties, if you watch the YouTube videos. It would usually start out with them in a tuxedo, and then it shows them. On, they'll take that tuxedo and they'll turn it into a little small thumbnail and shows them yeah. on stage while they're talking. Ronnie's face changed a lot from like ninety seven to two thousand five or six. For sure, he also had some facial growth with that. Yeah. You know, so I, I was like you. You know, I was in denial. I said, "Well, I just got bigger." You know, it's natural that I'm, I'm fatter, I'm more muscular, everything's heavier. <laughs> But now, you know, I look at myself when I was 20 years old at 220 pounds, and I'm about 220 right now, and it's not the same head. It's not the same face as it was. I mean, yeah, we age in 15 years. I'm expecting some creases here, some creases here, and this. That's normal. Yeah. But not for this to grow, my lips to grow, my jaw to grow. That's not normal. Yeah. The overall size. So, okay, so yeah, so basically, GH. Makes you ugly, and it grows you, gives you big feet. <laughs> so in other words, stay away from it. <laughs> Would you? Okay, and it's a lot of money too. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive. Yeah. Okay, as far as gains, right? Realistically speaking, right? I feel like, let's say gear. I feel like it might give you, I don't know, thirty, thirty, four. It's hard to say. Let's say thirty, forty pounds of stage weight, something like that. If I was natural, I'll probably be competing at like. 210, 220, I, I would assume, maybe 30 pounds, right? Like GH, like overall, how much pounds of stage weight? It's going to be different for everybody. Like Joe probably add fucking 30 pounds from damn GH, where somebody might add a little less, right? But on average, do you think it's like 5, 10 pounds, or you think it's much more than that? I think it varies on how long you take it, how much you take, quality of it. Um you know, as far as the positive effects of GH, I will say that when I switched from those greens to the yellows, I was already on cycle at the time. I was using test. I think I ran 100 milligrams of probe and 100 milligrams of NPP. That was my cycle at that time. 
Yeah. And I was running that. So basically 1400 milligrams a week at that mm-hmm. point. And I was making consistent progress. But I remember when I switched, I had obviously I said to drop the dosage back and stuff because I literally couldn't handle the side effects. I remember my weight shot up almost 15 pounds. Water wasn't muscle. But I did notice when I got got it to three units and it was tolerable for me, I noticed I had a different level of fullness about my body. The muscle was fuller, but I also noticed when I was training, you know, I was training at like, let's just say, I don't know if you guys can really see, but let's just say my linear training was going like this. When I had the GH, it went a little faster. Boom. I, I I was actually able to see it in the gym. I noticed my sleep was better. And I also noticed this is a weird, like, metro term for me to say, but like, I noticed my skin looked better. It was like glowing a little bit. Like, I had healthier looking skin. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll say that about it. I can see that. Yeah. It, I, there's no, like, like I said, it's not like an anadrol. There's not like a bump overnight. It's more so I feel like you continue to progress at a, at a better, better rate. Like on gear, let's say I was putting on, I don't know, let's say it slowed down to like, it went from like maybe seven pounds a year and it went down to like three pounds a year. When I got back on GH, it went back to like seven pounds a year consistently. So it's like, it's more of a consistency thing. I don't think it's like a right off the bat. The only thing you do know the right off the bat is like from fullness. Like you said, the skin, I feel like- I got the fullness immediately, yes. Yeah, the skin wraps around the muscle type. The first show when I did GH, with the with the first show I actually uh worked with you. I, w- I think I worked with you toward the ending. I think I prepped myself from the beginning. But um the way my skin wrapped around the muscle looked different. You know, it, it definitely looked different. It was a tighter, I don't know, rounder. Not harder though, but like tighter, rounder looking. You know, so Yeah, I think it does create more intracellular fluid and gives you that full factor. Um some people can run the GH all the way to competition time, and some people can't. I was a guy that I could take it the morning of the show, Damn. and it did not affect my look at all. Oh yeah, that, I, I I can't do that. I got to come off like a month a month before the show. You, most people's two to four weeks to get rid of that fluid and start to balance things out. Yeah. Oh, one other really random side effect. I want to see if you guys ever had this. Mm-hmm. I noticed when I would take growth hormone my muscle cramps like let's just say i train chest that day right and i i reach across my body i'm like oh oh shit my pecs cramping fuck Mm -hmm. you know like my quads i'd be laying there in the bed sleeping and it would bring me out of a dead ass sleep and put me in the floor the cramp would be so bad the moment the gh was gone the cramps was immediately gone yeah you know what when i was after working out when i was showered if I shower, I hit chest, and when I go to shower to reach over, to reach, I would get the bad cramps. See, but did you ever get them anywhere else? Like, say you train arms, and like you're eating, you're like, oh man, my bicep would cramp. I'd get that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the bad That's thing right. is, like, my bicep would cramp. So the first thing you think is you're going to stretch it out, right? And then your tricep. I'm like, oh shit, now what? Because <laughs> it would happen. Like, I can handle the arm cramp, right? What sucks is when your quad cramps. And you try to bend your leg backwards, and then your hamstring grabs too. And I'm like, oh. I've done, I've, I've done that. That's the worst. You can't, you can't do shit about it, but take it. <laughs> I remember laying in the floor one time. It was like three or four o'clock in the morning. This was <laughs> well over a decade ago. I remember, like, I got up like four o'clock in the morning, and I was cussing. I was like, oh, I can't take it. Shit hurts. My ex is like, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? She's like, do I need to call somebody? I was like, no, just go to sleep. I was like, I'll be okay. Just give me like 10 or 15 minutes. I'm just going to have to suffer through this pain until it quits. I thought the muscle was going to tear. Like, I really thought that something was going to tear. It cramped so bad. Yeah. And I'm thankful I don't deal with that anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know, like, I, was, I was just telling Paul, I was like, I was, you know, I just finished, you know, doing the damn thing. But my lower ab cramped and I was still inside. I was like, hold yeah. on, stay right there. Stay right there. Don't move. That was the word. The, the, the whole crap thing. Difficult. With the whole crap thing, what I learned over the years, like I'll, I'll I'll hobble to the refrigerator and I'll grab a pickle jar and I'll drink the pickle juice, two big ass drinks of it, and about two minutes the crap's are gone. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, like you're in them. Salt, yeah, salt, salt and water usually. Salt and water, yeah. 
Hey, bro, um, pickles just much easier to get through the salt and water. You it is, dude. Yeah. Make that shit well, I told you the, the pickle story with you know who, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed a lot of the guys that I fish with, you oh, know, because you're out on the salt water, and you don't really notice it. It catches up on you. You'll dehydrate and you'll start to cramp out there. I've noticed several guys will actually eat pickles when they're fishing offshore for that reason to stop the cramping. Yeah. They'll eat pickles or potato chips. Both get the yeah. job done. Oh, the salt, huh? The potato chips? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, see, uh, I do get cramps, but I never paid attention to when I was getting it. I just randomly randomly get them. It's usually when I when I get like a really good pump, I, I take I usually, you know, usually on cycle because I get better pumps. Yeah. If I get like a really intense pump, I definitely you know, I'm definitely gonna cramp up. But I never related it to GH, but I, I mean, I'm sure you get better pumps on GH as well. So it kind the of, only muscle that would ever cramp on me in the gym was the abs. Oh, that's and that sucks. Abs. But it was weird because, like, let's just say again, I'm training chest. I could literally have my chest ready to explode in the gym, no cramps. But when that pump goes away about an hour later, and I cross my body, I'm like, oh, and I have to like pull way back to like get the cramp out. Yeah, yeah. That's when it would hit me was later that 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 night. Yeah. With abs, if you don't train abs regularly, and you're like, you know what, let me start training abs, they're gonna cramp up real bad. Yeah, it sucks. Super real bad. It looks like um, off the movie Alien, where it comes out of your belly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like your abs look completely oh. deformed. Like you have one ab in the middle that just sucks in really weird. <laughs> it, it gets bad. But uh, gentlemen, it's that time. I'm, I'm going hypo again. So yep. uh, we get, <laughs> I think we've been on uh, about two hours. That's a that's a solid solid podcast. So Compton, ho- hopefully we, we have you back up there, back on. I know you have about you know a million clients, but no, I'm actually on the lower end right now, and quite frankly, it's very peaceful. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for thanks for coming on. Let's let's go let's go get some food in now. All right, All right man. Talk to you guys later. Guys. All right, man. Hopefully we have you back on, Compton. Yep.